right. Hello, 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 everybody. How's it going, uh, FS Gamer and Dr. Dano? How are you? How are you? So, JSI is having a challenge, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, it's been going on for a little while now, but it still has a good bit left, so I saw that and figured it'd be fun to participate in a challenge. So, let's go ahead and let's look at the uh, JSI page here. So, uh, right here we have the challenge. So, it's a firefighting land vehicle. Uh, our next competition is a firefighting land vehicle. This challenge will last 30 days and will end September 18th. So, we've got some time. We have about 14 days. Uh, submission cannot be something that was started prior to August 19th. So, as you can see, I'm starting today. Your submission must be submitted in the competition's mission by the posted end date. Your submission must, must be a land vehicle. XML is allowed. It um, XML is allowed only if it is cosmetic except wheel uh, grip or size. I cl further clarified that, so wheel grip and size is allowed. Uh, your creation will be judged on aesthetics, functionality, creativity. Hope you have fun with the challenge. P.S. I put some ideas in the pinned message. If we go down to competition discussion, I asked this this morning. Quick rule clarification. Um, is wheel grip and XML size allowed? Yep. Uh, wheel grip and uh, XML uh, yes, XML wheel grip and size is allowed. So that is kind of the housekeeping on that. So kind of know what I want to start with. So we'll start with a little bit of reference material. And so I'm kind of, uh, you know, as I'm wanting to do, I kind of want to do a, let me bring that back up. So I'm looking for, this is a, uh, is a truck and ladder system. And so I like these. These are kind of neat. The... You have the tractor, you have the trailer. It's a permanently affixed trailer with the with the ladder on it. And there's a little cab in the back and somebody will sit in the back and they'll actually steer the, the wheels in the back. So this allows these, um, these units to be able to operate in cities and really tight quarters because the trailer can actually steer around the corner. So you have somebody who is doing that. Also, you can have the trailer steer out to block traffic as you're going down. So for example, if, if it needs to take a wide right turn, they'll actually block the traffic a little bit with the, with the uh, trailer. So I think this is a kind of a neat way to do it. So I'm gonna use this as kind of a reference material. Not, uh, not gonna rely on it too much. We'll kind of build our own thing, but uh, that's kind of what we're working with. So let's see, read some chat here. All right, yep, FS Game was building a fire truck. Yep, just coincidence it looks like. So let's go ahead and get started. So there were no size constraints. What I want to do is I'm going to grab the cab over. So I worked on the cab over quite a bit. Uh, cab over had a bunch of updates on that. Got it uh, set up with air brakes. So a bunch of the sy new systems. I'm going to probably end up uh, putting out an updated version of T-Test at some point. So I want this width, so I'm just going to measure it. All right, so that's 11 wide. So we're going to go for an 11 wide on this sucker. I'll double check it. So that's 11. And then we have the mirrors, which will be 13. So that's about standard. All right, so we'll start with 11. All right, verify. There's 11. Okay, so there's going to be 11. All right, so we can start with some frame rails. So for the motor, I need at least three wide. And then I want to make sure I can get some tires in here. So we're going to go. All right, good. So that's kind of setting up the frame. Could probably come one more in the frame if I need to. But start working on this frame here. And what I'm going to do is... Let's go ahead and uh, da 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 da. Like to do single single axle in the rear, but the issue is this: the game doesn't like that. The game prefers having uh, multiple screws in the rear. So we'll see how this works. I'm gonna start throwing some wheels on here. So let's grab the Mac cab over. We'll pretty much grab its uh, all of its wheels. Could just grab it st straight off the chassis too. But uh, this has a bunch of microcontrollers I want. So this is going to be the new standard for a lot of my microcontrollers. So I think I like to do this single, single axle, uh, single screw, but we'll see if I can even do it that way. 
Can't really touch the XML tires too much, but uh, we'll have to take a look here. So let's go ahead and we'll copy this wheel. Want it all the right size here. All right, so let's stick that there. Should be cutting them is what I should be doing here. Let's undo that. I'm going to cut them. That way, some of the connections are already made on the microcontrollers. That will speed the process a little bit. Try with a single screw. Depending on how heavy the the ladder trailer is, we might run into issues with this because of uh, the way the game just doesn't like a single screw. It really doesn't. But we shall see. So, So let's start working with this. This uh, this rear axle may come in or out. I have yet to decide. So. Probably end up sliding it at some point and see where we want it. But uh, just kind of want to get it on there. I need to see how big the cab's going to be. Alright, so there is our rear axle. Grab mud flaps all the way through with our whole rear setup here. I don't need ramps, um, but we'll take them for now. You don't really, you don't need the ramps. The ramps are for putting a trailer on, and this is a permanently fixed trailer. So we want a little bit of. Uh, of overhang might have to go to to twin screw we'll see how the game wants to play it here it's gonna be a pain or not all right so that's looking pretty good so far All right, so pretty good. Sizing doesn't look too bad at the moment. Yep, I got a little bit of uh, source material here. This is what we're looking at right now. So it'll be one of these uh, these tiller type trailers. So these are cool because you can steer the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the left right on the keyboard as your trailer steer, so that the driver up here can actually uh, steer the trailer. So if the weight's not too much, we can do a single screw. If not, we're gonna have to do a twin screw. So we'll we'll see. We'll see how this works. Um, the game may not like it, but we'll see. If uh, need be, I can go to a to a twin screw. Yeah, these are often worked around in cities. That way, by steering the rear, you can really get them in into the tighter city area. All right, so let's start banging in a, a muta. All right, so we expect that, you know, if this is bumper, let's get some wheel wells in here. That helps me kind of figure out space-wise. You know, often having a tractor trailer can actually be more maneuverable than having a straight back because you can, uh, 
you know, you can swing that trailer out. You do get off tracking, but you can manipulate the trailer where you can't do that with a straight job, so. All right, so another cab over here. So I'm going to try to get this engine as low as possible. I think we don't need a 5x5. Five five. That's excessive. Let's throw a 3 in here to start with. I'm just trying to space this stuff out so I know where the space is. I doubt this is going to be hot. so I don't want it overly tall, so I have to kind of... Trying to get things kind of spaced here where I want them. And I want it pretty low profile. They're not very tall. because You figure a fire truck has to be able to get under bridges in the city. It can't be excessively tall. So, you know, if it's too tall, you're not going to be able to get where you need to go. So that's uh, very important. Right, so let's see. Can I grab the side here? You're not going to like that, are you? Okay, so let's go. Do I really need that much? Yeah. Okay. Twenty, okay, twenty is good. Doesn't need to be ultra, ultra powerful. You know, because this is a, yeah, because of the the game gaminess of the game. You know, we're gonna need, we're gonna probably need to carry water. This would probably just pump. You know, where you would even have a pumper come. I don't know if this tanks water. I'll have to see. Uh, nope, it it has three hundred gallons on it, so likely it has a feeder tank. And that's the 300 gallons, and then you are using other trucks to do it. Let's see. How's it going, Tackle Hungarian? Oceanic, how are you? How are you? Hey, how's it going there, Miles? So, uh, you know, I will put a little bit of a, a water tank on this because, of course, you know, for the challenge, you're probably going to want to be able to actually spray some water. So uh, we'll be adding some bit of water in there. But, you know, IRL, they'd probably be hooking to a hydrant. All right, so nice low profile engine because we want to be able to put this underneath the, we want to be able to put it underneath the tractor and keep it as low as possible. All right, let's merge that. Start working on cooling plumbing first, just that's going to be the biggest pain to get done. All right, so it's going to probably want to go here. there what's that it doesn't matter that's going like that
cool and zen. Need to match, need to uh, manifold the bottom. All right, so engine is now plumbed that way. Okay, that's good. Oh, that's cool. Oh, volunteer firefighter. Yeah. So the floor pan is going to be right here. That's going to help keep this a little bit on the lower end for height, which is what I want. These are low profile. Again, you know, they need to be able to go through the city and drive under bridges. They can't be incredibly tall, you know. All right. And then we have uh, starter and alternator here. going to take it a little bit to start with one starter, but... You know, doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, it just takes an extra second to start. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to put in the full integrated air brakes. I'll show you the Mac, uh, the cab over, what I got accomplished on that. That um, that has air brakes in it now. So let's go. Let's see what color. We'll figure out a fire truck color here or later, but um, what exactly color we want to use? But put it in a placeholder for now. All right, we're gonna nuke this now. So let's do replace color. We're gonna do the very darkest of dark here on the frame. All right, good. And then uh, I'm gonna go back and I'll brush out what I don't want. So not that I did want. Okay. Likely it'll be a red. We'll figure out what we want for red later. I'm just trying to get this kind of set and I want all the interior parts painted out. Okay, good. And then likely we'll use a gray here for the floor. And we'll do we'll play with this paint later. Alright, so that's a good start, I think, on that. Checking a little reference material there. Okay, good. We have a step there into the rear, and then we have... So this has a little bit of a more rear set drive wheels, so I might... I'm going to probably back those drive wheels up a little bit. So we'll grab them up, back them up a little bit. Okay, make sure I'm not grabbing anything I don't want to. And so we'll find where we want to be. So I want to have enough steps, so probably three blocks, one, two, three there. Then I need, okay, so right there will be step up into the driver's position. Driver's position, we're going to have to have dash, windshield dash. So let's go, I don't want too much overhang, but um, that might do. A nice short wheelbase, again, That's these are designed for driving around the city. You know, and so you want to have them, short wheelbase is going to make it easier in a smaller turning area. Nice, nice. Okay, good.
because they have uh, they have four doors in there so that for example a bunch of the crew can sit in the back so you know you need uh, extra seating in there for the other firefighters so we'll need that to be able to have the other firefighters in there all right Starting to come along here. Let's start working on getting some of this stuff in here. I'm gonna use the. I'm gonna use most of the guts of the of uh, this tractor. So, I'm gonna. This is. Uh, you know, I put a lot of work into this off screen as well. So this has a lot of just what it needs, and that makes it nice and uh, convenient. I don't have to try to reinvent the wheel and reimagine some of this. You know, a lot of this of it I'm going to build, but um, rebuild. But uh, I like to do as much fresh as I can. I'm gonna cut that. Trying to see where this can go down. So let's figure this really quick. I should have done that. Oh, let's see. Let's cut it. I gotta see exactly where this needs to go. Okay, will that fit perfectly? That's one too high. Okay, so I gotta trim one. Pr trying to get this lower profile. So you cut right here. You cut that, yeah, cut that right there, and then hopefully that should work. Like so. Not good. Oh, that ended up fitting where it needed to anyway. That's interesting. Okay. Oh, come on, flicky camera. All right, so I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna use the whole top here. Of the stuff's pre hooked, so it helps. All right, that's coming along nicely. All right, and then we want enough space for we're still one high. I thought we were one high. We are. Yeah, I wanted to come down. I thought I cut this properly. I did, but ah, damn it. All right, let's do, I need to go back a bunch because this is going to be a nightmare to try to get this to fix right here. Right. Yeah, it's going to be a nightmare to redo that, so I'm just going to redrag this right where it belongs. Okay. Because I want that floor to match right where I want it, so I want that floor to be right. I'm trying to get this low profile needs to be down low. What is it sitting on in the... Okay, that's right where it belongs. Okay, that's good. I was one too high. That was what I was trying to avoid. Okay, good. So that is now... That's better. Okay, good. That is better. I, was, I thought I'd cut it right there, you know, when I cut out this section. And then I was like, why is it not matching up? Okay, good. Check with chat in a second. Trying to keep this low profile again. You know, it needs to be able to go under bridges. So. Not that we really have any in game, but try to keep the themes proper. So those. 
those who are celebrating Labor Day today. Hope you're having a good Labor Day. Bring back up stream. Let's check some chat, chat, chat. I don't know who Steve Harwell is. How's it going, Citrus? How are you? How are you? All right, so this is coming along nicely. I think uh, we need to figure out what we're getting for seating in here for the firefighters in the back. You know, I'm planning on playing some Starfield coming out. Uh, that comes out the 5th, so that's tomorrow. So I wanted to get working on this build. I have plenty of time for this, and I don't think this will take me too long, this build. But, you know, I want to get a bunch of this build going so that it's... Um, you know, it's underway so that when uh, Starfield comes out, I can play a bunch of Starfield. So I'm really looking forward to that. Not necessarily 100% my kind of game. But, um, you know, I'm, I like a single-player game. You know, I, as you can imagine, <laughs> I'm an equipment operator. That's what I love to do in these games. I love to operate the equipment. And so one thing that, you know, Starfield, they... They... Uh, democratize the way you operate your ships. And what I mean by that is democratize probably isn't the right word. It, it's, you know, thematically correct, I guess. But, uh, you know, what I mean by that is they make it so that it's, it's approachable. That's better. Let's say approachable. They make it approachable to more people, you know, so you don't, it's not a hardcore sim. And so that's beneficial. It, you know, it allows more people to get, um, to play and to be able to feel like they're a space captain, you know, which is great. But it also, you know, for me personally, I like to, uh, you know, I like the challenge, you know, and, you know, I don't do it out of bragginess, but, you know, I, I am kind of, you know, I do uh, have a lot of experience operating complex equipment. So that's kind of my niche. So for me to enjoy operating equipment, it really kind of needs to be a little bit more on the complex end. For me to really enjoy it so i really like simulators i've always been a huge sim, sim fan and so i would have loved a little bit more sim but really nobody's building a sim you know a space sim you know the uh star citizen gave that concept up a long time ago after they sold it to all the sim fans and everybody paid money for the game that they never intended to build so salt 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 but um I'm going to get this to work right. Uh, not like this, I'll tell you that. That's not what I want to do. What I want to do is this. Yeah, this needs to be a little extra long. Like I was saying, you know, you put the crew back here, so this is a little bit extra long here. And so I think what I'm going to do is cut to there, cut there. Okay, so I'm just trying to... I have, like, I did some reshaping on the back here. This, like, just this little bit of shaping here really brought the build together. I did that off screen. You know, so I'm trying to accomplish something similar here. And so I kind of need to, uh, you know, I kind of want to replicate a little bit of that feeling of a little bit of uh, shapeliness in the back here. Gives it a little bit of interest, you know game we're all working with the same blocks and you know you get a little bit of shapeliness there it can really help I think I might cut yeah let's cut one more okay trying to get just that shapeliness in the back to look look a little bit better you know like that Congratulations to Citrus is the um, community favorite for the Build Challenge Foxtrot. Congrats, congrats, congrats. You're already in the credits for today's video. I was going to publish today's video. I'm like, ooh, it's it's six minutes after midnight. I can uh, put Citrus in the credits. Just kind of looking at my... They're awfully squared out. Let me see. Kind of... Kind of... Trying to figure this out. This angle here. Let's go like this. So I actually want this a little bit squarer, I think. I think I can make this still look good and have it squared. What I'll do is this. And then I'll actually put in the... Uh, 
you'll have the you'll have this wedge piece on here and then it'll be overhang so that'll work out nicely that will get me a little bit of shapeliness in here and uh, won't be too blocky you kind of have to do that in game to try to get you know the game can be blocky of course and so to <clears throat> get a little bit of shapeliness in here put a little bit of detail in there And then a bunch of the, it looks like pumping equipment is going behind, uh, right behind this area. So that will be pumping equipment. So expect to put the pumping equipment in here. And that will, uh, that will give this a little bit more interest there as well. So there we go. I'm liking that shape. That's looking good there. Right, and then the rear wall will go in like so. And then we'll have a little gap there that will pump and equipment will kind of suck into there. So that's good. Let's start. Um, I'm just going to, I'll pick a, a different red color at some point, but I'm going to just do a color place on that. And we'll start painting this a little bit, painting a little bit early on this one, just to kind of see what we're looking at paint wise. That's a wise move. Wise move, wise move. Usually have pretty beefy. You have pretty beefy front bumpers on these. See, I might just make a silver chromed out bumper is what I'm thinking, but I want to play with this first. I'm thinking the chrome is what going to be what I end up using, but I've got to play with it, see. Yeah, I'm thinking chrome bumper, and I'll do a little bit more detailing on it. It's a little bit too rounded for me. I like it a little bit square. Definitely not. Too much bumper, I think. We'll go one. Now we'll chrome it. Yeah, good. A little bit of contrast there helps. Yep, that definitely helps. I think. <clears throat> I don't know if I like the black line there. I think I want to step it up one. I think I want to go to a gray. Yeah, it's a little bit less harsh. No, don't do color swap, please. Thank you. Okay. That's better height-wise, I think. All right, so I'm digging that. That's starting to come along pretty well here. And then the top on the on the reference is uh, has this 
is black. I like that. That's kind of a good... I'm trying to get like good contrast colors. I want multiple colors in here. So where the grays are, I'm going to do a black. Like that, I think. I think we'll go one up like that. Just do it on the window line. Okay. Yeah, I think we'll do it on there. This is the problem child right there. But what we can do is take this handle and we can move it up one because it's three. You know, we can only color that face one color. So by making it three, we can easily color it one, color it in there. So I'll check chat in a second. I'm kind of out of it right now. Just building, building. And then this will be black there. See how I like it all black up top. May or may not like it all black up top, but we shall see. To have some contrast in there. Check it in the world, see what it looks like. Actually, in game, that's to be expected until we put some weight on the ass. I'm liking it. I like the low profile of it. I'm digging the colors. The black's a little bit harsh all the way up there. I might um, put another, put it red up top. I think I will do that. Kind of digging the red up top, I think. So, yeah. Too harsh for me. Just do another contrast line. Gives a little bit more interest. And I will use the bucket here because that's not going to hurt anything. Yeah, we'll see how it all blends together when we get it in there. But I might go to, I like the gray where it is. This is a little bit more rounded probably than I like. I might do something different there. But I want to get the pump systems in there, see what that's going to look like. How did I miss a, uh, this sucks when I missed this. I missed this mud flap. Uh, I don't know how I missed this, the mud flap holder, because that's a pain to just connect now. Not too bad, but All right, let's get the fifth wheel in there. Let's grab all the fifth wheel. It'll be permanently connected. I don't. They might be able to disconnect those. I can't remember if they can or not. So I have all the parts. So I think I do. Let's go grab all of this. I just want to move this down to the ground so it's on the on the floor. Oh, come on. I knew I was going to do that. So that's good. So we want the front to be very heavy. That's going to help because the trailer is going to be pressed on the rear axle too. All right, good. So that's pretty good. All right, good. Check chat. Catch up with chat. Get it off uh, display capture. Put it back in game capture. Oh, thank you, Miles. Appreciate it. 
Everybody, uh, congratulate Miles. Miles is now part of Captain's crew. Thank you very much, Miles. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you there, Flo. I appreciate that. Uh, let me back up a little bit. I see that I am back. I'm uh, a little bit behind on chat here. Oh, I'm glad uh, you enjoyed it, Citrus. Uh, for the JSI challenge, is that what you're talking about, Oceanic? Oh, thank you, Miles. Appreciate it. Thank you, FS Gamer. Yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah, I, I do miss the Workbench podcast. We used to hang out. It was, you know, Endo, Professor, and I, some other people, Clara. So, I don't know. I, I don't have full details why they ended, but, you know, sometimes things come to an end. I did enjoy those, though. Those are fun. All right, so let's see. Uh, just kind of looking at this stuff. We're going to put some pumping in there. I probably should start... I'm going to start trying to bank some mass in this. Oh, come on, dude. The flicky camera is absolutely insanity. It's like it almost does like a mouse acceleration. It's quite obnoxious. All right, let's cut. Let's get transmission in there. I am very much a function guy. Some people are very much form people. They care most about the form factor function is most important to me so that has to work first before I get too much in like this is this is record setting for me for putting in paint this early uh, usually I don't because what I want to do is get this sucker running first but you know I built cab over recently I've got all the microcontrollers so I know it's gonna work it's more uh, you know I know it's gonna work so that's kind of there all right, let's go ahead and can I extricate this transmission? I think I can. I, I made it pretty simple to extricate the transmission. So let's see. Yeah, I could have yanked the engine too, but I, I really wanted to just build a fresh engine between the frame rails on this one. So that's why I kind of did that. So I think I have, do I have all of the engine stuff, I, uh, the transmission? I think, I believe, I maybe do. Okay, good. So this is going to have the 13 in it, I think. We'll just do that. It'll be fitting for the 13. So one thing I did off screen was I put in, so on my, reverse, my reverser gear there, what I did was, I talked about this a little bit in some of the live streams. So you need to think of, I, I want a flywheel in here. You need to think of your tire as the final gear. And depending upon your the radius of your tire, actually it's the diameter. Well, radius and diameter, of course, go together. I'll, I'll bring a paint. We'll we'll talk about it a little bit here. You know, some uh, some things to like if you really care about gearing and transmissions, like I do, and you want to get them accurate. So I built the transmission. The 13 speed is very close on all the ratios. There's one that's a little bit iffy, but they're pretty close. And so there's one element that uh, I'm just doing that because I can't stand the white. Uh, there's one gear that's a little bit off. But anyway, so I made the 13 speed, you know, when I did on the live stream the other day. I made it so it was very accurate to real life. And then what I did was I put in a correction factor in the gear, kind of like an overdrive. And the reason is this. If you think about it, and I actually measure this. I went online and I looked up the... Um, uh, what is the R22 fives? R22 fives are usually what they are. They R2, I think they are 22 fives. What they use for tr uh, a lot of tractors, you know, tractor, I mean truck. And so, um, you know, if you go ahead and so let's, I'll try to figure this, do, get this going here. All right. So if you figure we have a tire. And so the standard tire for a lot of these tractors is. Uh, it has a uh, a diameter of, let me see if we can get a line that's a different color. Okay, it has a diameter of, Jesus, that's enormous. All right, it has a diameter of, if I can ever get this program to work. 
Diameter of about uh, 43 inches, I think it said, 43 inches. And so it comes out to, uh, and then you can do circumference. So for example, let me see if I can do um, diameter to circumference. All right, so here's diameter to circumference. And so what you do here is you put in the, um, we can put in the diameter. So if we look here, uh, they're often in inches, the ones I was looking up. So if we put in here, I think it was 43 inches. Um, and then, no, uh, that's not right. No, that's right. Okay, I'm talking uh, radi uh, diameter is going to be, how hell was it? I think it was 22.5. Oh, let me look them up. Okay. Uh, let's see. Semi. So what I did was I just did uh, truck papers. And so you can kind of get an idea of what you have to do to configure your truck to have the right transmission. So let, let so we'll find a semi, find a semi, and there's a Cascadia, and then we want to go down to tires. They always list the tires. Tires are very expensive. You need to know what type of tires you have. And so we find the tires here. Uh, da -da -da -da. That's the description. Let's see if we can find the tires. Tires right here. So... Um, Take these tires here, control C that, we'll go find them. All right, so here are the tires. So Michelin's right here. These are the truck tires. And so if we look at them, try to find the, um, try to find all the numbers here. Is it 24 or five? 24.5. That, that's too, um, that's too big. I think it's, it's a, it must be the radius. Nope, it's not the radius. Let me, God damn it, let me look. Um, let me see. I looked it up and then I can't remember at this point. All right. Uh, da -da -da -da. Trying to find the diameter. I already looked this up, but I'm um, trying to find it. Okay, here we go. So here we have uh, diameter in millimeters, or in inches, and then those are in millimeters. All right, so we have uh, circumference in inches and millimeters. So that's uh, 3.17 meters in circumference. All right, and so you can do a diameter circumference calculation. We don't have to do that. We can just do it. We can just look at this. So this one works here. So if we look at this chart, it shows us the diameter in, uh, you know, we'll use the millimeters because that helps us. So that's about uh, one meter is the diameter. All right, so if we look in game and we take our blocks and we measure the diameter of the tire, as you can see there, we have five blocks. So that'll be, and it's a little bit less. It's a tiny bit less. You can see it's a hair less. So that is five blocks. That's 1.25 meters. So our tires are about a quarter bigger. So this is how big the tire is in real life. That's the diameter of the tire IRL is right about there. So our tires in game are bigger. So you need to think of that circumference wise. So if we go back to paint, and you have your circumference. If this is our normal real tire, right? And then we have another tire, which now all my numbers are screwed up, but uh, we'll, f we'll work with it. And so we have a second tire, and this one is bigger uh, than the real one. So this is our in-game, and this is our, uh, that is our real life tire. And so we look at that, and we start to look at the uh, what do you call it? Let me go back, back and forth, back and forth. So if we look at the circumference here, that's 3.1 meters in circumference. So for every one RPS, for every one rotation per second the tire turns, we're going to be going forward 3.1 meters. So each RPS that we give the tire is going to make us go 3.17 meters forward. Okay? And so look at this picture. It looks just like mine. <laughs> <laughs> Should have put that next to it. So by changing the tire uh, diameter, you're essentially you're making it go faster because you every one rotation, the tire still wants to turn one rotation 
You know, uh, if we looked at the Eaton Fuller 13, let's grab it real quick. Da, da, da. So, like, if we look at the Eaton Fuller 13 that I built and put in here, so you start looking at the ratio. So, for example, in low, low gear, that's 12 rotations of the engine for every one rotation of the tire, essentially. And so, if we go down to 10th gear, if you notice 10th gear, that's for every one rotation of the engine, we're getting one rotation of the tire. So, in 10th gear, if our RPS is 10, that means that our wheel is moving 10 times per second. It's rotating 10 times per second. Well, then we can come up here and we can multiply it by this. So that means we're going to be going 31 meters per second. So we know that in 10th gear at 10 RPS, we're going 31 meters per second or 60 something miles an hour. And so then we go even lower here. That means um, for every 0.73 of the engine, we're going to be going, um, you know, uh, one rotation of the tire. So that's an extra about 30%. So 30% faster than that. And so the problem is this. In game, my tires are bigger than they are uh, in real life. And so by using the transmission from real life numbers, the issue becomes this is as the tire gets bigger, my vehicle is too fast. And so what I have to do is I have to then go back in and I have to use a correction to then account for the tire diameter to uh, keep the speeds realistic. So kind of long drawn out process on that, but that's kind of, uh, some people might find that interesting. You know, they might say, I use the same gear ratio, but my vehicle is going much faster than the real one. Why? And the reason is because you have a diameter of the tires larger, it's gonna greatly increase your speed. Oh, this transmission is going to have to go up. Ugh. I'm going to have to move this transmission. Okay, that's fine. I have to I have to root, uh, move the transmission up a little bit. Let me check some chat here. Johnny, how are you? 25 centimeter thick blocks. I I just use the standard blocks for the roof. I Some people use the HUDs, uh, Johnny. I don't use the HUD. But... Um, you know, you just, you, yeah, we have the blocks we have. You kind of have to use them. You know, that's what I do. All my trucks have the court, you know, have the one block height. Uh, just really can't do anything about it. Unless they give us half block. Some people will use the, uh, an XML HUD, but I never do that. Uh, let's see. I want a flywheel. So, again, flywheels are good for trucks. The whole point is it um, conserves some of the energy. All right, so now I want to go in here. And so this transmission needs to go up. And so it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the AS. So let's go up with the transmission. The reason is the drive shafts. I don't want the drive shaft scraping on the ground. So that needs to go up. And then what we need to do is we need to come back. All right, paste that. All right, and then I need to pull the uh, pull the clutch. Clutch will come down. And then we'll just repipe this into the uh, into the transmission here. So that was kind of, oh, I can't do that either. Oh, crap. That sucks. Uh, let's see. Yeah, see, I don't want this drive shaft scraping the dirt here. Um, let's see. Can't go to the, yeah. So, yep. So I have to, I have to raise this up. So let's see. Can't do that. That's okay. So transmission's having to come back one more again. So that's not a huge deal, but it's okay because this is going to be underneath the floor anyway. So it's not um, not going to be too bad, but I have all the transmission. I think I do. Do I have it all? I think I have it all. Yeah, okay, I've got it all. All right, so it needs to come back one more. Okay, there we go. Not, not the end of the world. You know, it's going to be covered up. It's not going to be an eyesore, so. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Okay, good. What we can actually do with this now is I can use the, I can go from here and I can actually probably get a little bit more in the way of uh, boost off of the supercharger this way because we'll be able to move it a little bit faster. Okay, so that's in. Transmission's in now. All right, and then we'll run boost air off that.
All right, catch up and chat a little bit. How's it going there, Al? What's happening? What's happening? Yep, that's how people do it. You know, I don't, I don't like the HUD. That's why I don't use it on the roof. But that's what people do. They XML it to make it larger, and I don't care for it, so I don't do it. Uh, working on my build for the JSI challenge. Uh, JSI is having a fire truck challenge, so I'm building a fire truck. All right, so that's transmission in, and then I want to do. I'm going to put pumping unit in here, so I need to do that. I don't want to, I, I think we can cover this for now. Yeah, we should be able to cover this for now. Because I don't think we're going to be breaking that up any, breaking into that. Let's not, let's not do that yet. Let's get this sucker running. Okay. So I want to, I need to get as much mass in the back as I can. Still have not made a final decision. I, I won't know until I put a trailer on this to see if I need to do, uh, if I need a twin screw on this. I may need a twin screw on this, which is a twin uh, twin axles. Uh, uh, how, do, how did I not get my pumpkin? I want my pumpkin. Pumpkin's the differential here, so. Want my pumpskin. I didn't cut out my pumpkin, so. No wonder. Looks funky. I don't have my pumpkin in here. All right. Get the pumpkin in. All right, pumpkin's in now. I'm gonna throw some weight blocks in here. I I want uh, to start plumbing this up. I, I I'll throw some weight on it. We'll throw a real just to throw a trailer on there at some point, and we'll get rocking and rolling here. Okay, and then these will go frame to here. That will work for me. And then I'll go like this. Okay, good. So go like that's fine there. Okay. I, a lot of talking to myself here. I just kind of need to conceptualize. Okay. And then this is going to be, actually, we'll just run them under the frame rails here. I don't want to see them, so we'll run them up like this. Do this. I have a front uh, front drive on this. You wouldn't, of course, in real life have a front drive, but you uh, do in game because it just works a lot better to have a front, to have all the wheels powered. All right, that's good. And then. Music needs to be restarted. Let's catch up. How's it going there, Xorus? How are you? Yep, it's for the uh, JSI challenge. Yep, plan on starting to uh, play some Starfield tomorrow. That's uh, the plan, so that'll be fun. Did I make a video or could you make one on gearbox ratios? Uh, so I'm working on a transmission tutorial. It's going to be, I've started a couple times. I've already deleted it. I've got to work on it. It's, it's a very complex subject. And so in order to kind of do it right, I have to try to get it to be coherent and that can be challenging at times. So I'm, I'm working on it. Um, hopefully get it out. I'll show you my chart. I improved the chart. Part of that, you know, the, the difficulty and understanding and making it accessible to people is that is getting it where you know you can quickly access the chart bunch you know it's very obnoxious the way that they dumb down the spreadsheets um you know they make it so that it converts everything to friggin dates and so it's very frustrating because 
the uh, it tries to convert all of my fractions to dates and then you have to do a bunch of nonsense so ideally what I would like to do is here I'll show you this chart so this is the transmission tutorial chart I already put this together and so for example here is um, you know so for, say for example you wanted to you know make this so this is the new and improved chart and the benefit of this is what you do is you take this you copy this you come down here you paste it and you put in the vehicle name so we'll actually do it right here so here's the fire truck fire truck this one won't work because it's um, this one won't work because it's it doesn't have enough uh, it would have to have a fifth box to do the 13. But uh, anyway, so you come in here and you'd say, okay, what are my desired gear ratios? So let's say, okay, I want a 15 uh, to 1. Okay, I want a 12 to 1. 10 to 1. Uh, 7 to 1. 5 to 1 and 4 to 1. You know, you say, okay, so that's what I want. Okay, now I need to go get it. So this makes it easier than the other chart where I have to enter it in manually. But it's not as easy as I would like. What I wanted to do is a drop-down menu, and it would have the fraction. The 3, 3 to 1, you know, it would be 1 to 1, 6 to 5, 3, 2, 9, 5, 2, 1, 5, 2, 3, 3, 1, and then have them in, inverted. Uh, the issue with that is that uh, the spreadsheets, either this or uh, Excel, does not like fractions. They try to turn the dates. So you have to cheat it. You have to go decimal places. The whole point is for somebody who doesn't know a lot about this to be able to quickly click on 3-1 and have it work. Uh, and so that just doesn't work in, in the spreadsheet. So what you have to do instead is you come in here, you go 3 over 1, okay, and then you'd go, okay, 3 over 1, okay, that's a 9 to 1, okay. And then the only way to get to 15 is we're going to have to go uh, point this toward uh, away from the engine. And then we're going to go 2 to 1, okay, that's too much, okay, let's step it back. What's slower than that? Okay, 9, 5, 9 over 5, okay, there's a 16, 2, still too high, okay, let's go to a 3 to 2. 13.5, that's too low, okay, let's go ahead, we'll go back up to a... 9.5. Okay, and then we'll reduce it here by going backwards. 6.5. That's too much. Okay, so we're going to have to either have a 13.5 or go over to 16. Okay, we'll say 16. Okay, there we go. Then we come in here. We want a 12. Okay, we do 3. 3. Second one will be, what's that, 9? 9. Let's go one one seven point. No, that's too much. Uh, let's see. Five one. Okay, and then uh, so you know you go in here and you do that. So this is how you would work this. So this is what the transmission tutorial will be like. It'll be based off this chart. So this makes it a lot easier. You can, as you can see, I can much more quickly change these out so this is the new and improved chart um, you know this was very obnoxious because I'll show you here why if you go ahead and you do a so this is how it should look it should be 3 over 1 okay that's what it should look like and so what you should be able to do is a 3 3 t 3 over 1 times 3 over 1 right they're fractions so what they should do is they should be 3 divided by 1 so do that math real quick. 3 divided by 1 is uh, 3, of course. You know, so 3 times 3 is 9. You do something a little bit different, like a 9, 5, right? So it's 9 divided by 5. 9 divided by 5 is 1.8. So a 9, 5 is a 1.8. So it's a 1.8. And then you would do a, you know, say times another 9, 5. And so that's another 1.8. So it would be 1.8 times 1.8. 1.8 times 1.8 equals 3.24 is your final gear ratio. So that's ideally how I would like it is you'd be able to select that. But if we look up here, the chart always changes it to a date. So if I were to do this, for example, equals uh, this times this, which is what it should be. 
it gives me this absurd number because it's multiplying. Uh, three, it's doing 3 divided by 1 divided by 2023. So it's very uh, obnoxious. So, you know, the chart's a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. This chart took too much time because of that nonsense. So, um, you know, I'm going to do a transmission tutorial. It's just, it's going to take some time because of the nature of uh, sheets. And I have to try to make it coherent so people understand the concepts. It's a little bit challenging. I've done it a couple times in live streams trying to get ready for it where I can, uh, here, let's just, let's just V out all this stuff. Okay, they're good. We're good. You know, so that's that's what the new chart. I built that for the tutorial. I started the tutorial. I got like 20 minutes in. I need to keep it not short. You know, I I I'm very much against the notion that every every video that ever anybody ever watches has to be short. You know, some people, oh, this video is too long. I'm not watching. I'm like, okay, great. You know, it's not for you then. You know, I don't artificially make my videos short. You know, I make them the time I think they need to be. You know, it's, uh, I think, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you want to learn the thing. It's more important than, um, you know, than not learning the thing. And sometimes it takes some time to learn these things. And so, but I do have to keep it coherent where people can understand what the hell I'm talking about. So that can take some time. Uh, but I'd like to do, I'd like to get that done at some point, but it's going to take a little bit of uh, effort to get that to be coherent where people know what the hell I'm talking about. So, so that's, uh, that's the long answer to why, you know, the transmission tutorial is not out yet is it's just, it's going to take some time for me to get it coherent and to make sense. So what these things are simulating is these are your air cans. That's what actuates your air brakes. So that's why those are going there. Eventually, yeah. When I, when I do the tutorial, that will be released. I don't release stuff early. I release them when they're ready. So. Let me just, uh, I need to catch up on chat here. Yeah, but that's the plan is eventually I'm going to make a longer transmission tutorial. You can go ahead and watch one of the live streams. I did it. I can't even remember which one it was. It, it's, it says in the title, it's building... Um, building the... What was it? 18 speed? Or building the chassis. I actually went through I, I did it in one of the most recent ones for the I, when I built the 13 a couple days ago I went through the whole process of doing that what's the difference between one by one three by three and five by five gearboxes they're all the same now uh, they used to be they had torque limits so if you over torque them they broke the issue with that was for example for a helicopter you would need something like this up in the rotors if you had a high gear ratio so now you're trying to make a tiny little helicopter that's powerful, and you have to put this enormous heavy gearbox that weighs uh, only 25. That's not that bad. But, uh, it, you know, so I, for example, one of my old helicopters had to have this gearbox in the rotor to be able to handle the torque going to the rotor blades. So it was annoying everybody. So what the devs did was they made them so they don't break anymore, which I think was the right decision. And now they're cosmetic. So, for example, I use 5x5s on my ships because they look correct. You know, you want a big gearbox in there. Sometimes, like, I'll, I'll put the big gearbox right on the engine in the ship, and then behind that, I'll actually have a tiny one for reverse. So, um, you know, that's hidden. So, because you want them to look correct, so. All right, let's uh, see where I'm at here. Trying to, I'm looking at some of the reference material here. Okay, let me see, uh... Tiller fire truck. Okay. Tiller fire trucks. I'm just looking at some of the reference here. I'm trying to set up the trailer correctly to sit where it needs to be. All right. So let's start working on this. Um, I'm going to throw a trailer on here. I need to get this hooked up so that it's running. Uh, once it's running, I can start to get going on that. All right. So we've ripped a bunch of this out. All right, let's start moving some panels. So this is, what are you, engine panel? TTIS, this is TTIS, I believe. Are you TTIS? What are you? I reworked TTIS a little bit for this. So, you know, eventually I'm going to go back and work on TTIS a little bit. Uh, TTIS, okay. Uh, to be up to the new standard, I kind of made some changes in there. 
All right, here's TTIS. TTIS is Tractor Trailer Integration System. That is my system. That has things like Jake Brake and, and stuff that I want in there that's a little bit more simulator than, you know, some people are, are really interested in. You know, that I find it important to have things like Jake Brakes. Other people don't care, so they prefer, you know, a system that's a little bit more arcadey, which is fine. Just not what I what I prefer. I like a little bit more a uh, little bit more realism in some of that stuff. Do these have hip tanks on those? These are all enclosed, so I might put squares in here behind the fairings. I don't know. I kind of like I kind of like having the hip tanks. I'm gonna leave the hip tanks in there. We'll hip tank this sucker up. Where's the hip tank sitting on this one? Yeah, it's sitting up higher on this. We'll see how I like this. Fire truck has panels all over it, so I might. Okay, it goes fender. Well, let's let's not work on the on the tanks yet. I might put just uh, might put. Uh, let's try to get a little bit more of this uh, built on this truck here. So it has its pumping unit back here. So let's uh, start doing some of this pumping unit. I I just need it for looks here. I need to go aesthetics and get some of this pumping unit in there. So this is where your pump would pumper would be. So I kind of need to get this going just so I know spatially where I'm at. Okay. And then I'm going to probably square this off a little bit. Yeah, definitely going to square this off, I think. It'll look better squared out. Maybe a little something under here, but... I think a little bit more square. Looking at some of the other stuff, square. You know, Check and Sword does some really good squared off rears. I some it depends on the era. Like the my 80s stuff, they're a little less square than my more modern stuff. And so this is like where your pump. Pumping equipment would be in here. So you'd have, uh, they're going to be like equipment lockers here. You're pumping stuff for pumping the water goes there. I'm just looking at a bunch of different reference material, trying to see how they do there. Some are very low, some are higher. You know, some have like enormous cabins for a lot of crew. Some don't. So I'm thinking like that, probably. Let's do a little bit of paint. Okay. And then let's start working. This will be the same bumper color as kind of my chroming. All right, so that's starting there. The pump. I need to kind of find one that I like the look of and stick with it just to kind of get a little bit of coherent narrative going on there. Ooh, I like that one. That one's nice. Okay, I kind of found one that I, I'm digging. This one has a really nice short wheelbase on that one. Because I would like to theoretically cut the wheelbase a little bit if I can, but we'll see. Now, oh, come on, get out of here, you. Right, let's play with this a little bit here. So let's cut this back wall out and move it one. I'll catch up in chat in a second. We're just getting behind a building a little bit here. So Okay. All right, let's catch up on chat just for a second. I'm going to get some building here. Yeah, but I do plan on doing that. So. Okay, good, yeah. Yep, this will, uh, yeah, I'll release the table when I release the video. I need to get it 
linked up and finished and making it sure it's coherent, make sure everything works. And then as I go through the video, I can see, oh, this is going to confuse people. I'll change this to that. So, you know, I'll release it when I get that video out. Yeah, you know, my, my whole theory on some of this stuff is, for example, you know, if you went to college to get a degree in engineering, you know, you're not going to get a five-minute video. You're not going to get a five-minute session on how to do complex tasks. And that's when some of the people who are complaining that, oh, a video is too long. Oh, I have to watch this video. It's so long. Is, dude, if, do you want to learn it or not? And, you know, sometimes to learn a concept, it takes some time, you know. And, you know, you have, a, you know, you have somebody trying to teach you something that took them years to learn, you know, and you expect it to be taught to you in five minutes. And so one of the whole reasons why I started making these longer form tutorials was, you know, you have New Jersey who made some incredible videos. They were really good and very helpful. But you had issues where, for example, they were short. And at the end of it, what, what I'd often notice is people would go to Reddit. They go to all the you know the discords and they'd come in very frustrated and they go i've been working on this for three hours i can't figure it out i'm at my wits end the game sucks i'm having a miserable time and it was because they tried to learn in five minutes what took that person probably you know maybe years to learn and they tried to learn it in five minutes and if they had and so then they went on their own and they spent three hours trying to then figure it out after that and so it didn't take them five minutes to learn that concept. It took them three hours and five minutes to get to where they were, and they're still confused. And so my whole thought process is if you learn it completely and you actually learn the why of the thing, you know, and it, and it only takes you an hour, well, it's actually shorter to watch the hour-long video that's comprehensive and teaches you all the details than it is to you know, watch a five minute video and then struggle for the next three hours, you know, and some people will love to go to that struggle. And it's like, it's better sometimes, you know what, don't sit there and struggle for three hours, you know, watch the longer video, learn the concepts, and then you'll be all set. You won't have to struggle. And that's kind of why that's my whole thought process and why I do some of these longer videos is it's, you know, it's, it's going to be short in the long run. You know, if you understand the concept, if you know why a transmission works, you can solve the problems. You know, it's like in my modular engine tutorials, I go into a little bit more more depth. And for example, like people go, oh, you know, I used your, I used the uh, the microcontroller from your tutorial and the engine is clicking or what? And I go, well, did you adjust it? And they go, well, no, I didn't need, you know, I didn't adjust it. Well, you know, I said in the video, you have to adjust it for your own build. And, you know, it's like, you know, I showed, I've showed you guys how, for example, like this here, I changed some stuff in, in the engine microcontroller on this. You know, the idle is 3.5, the max RPS is 15. The p-value, I actually changed the p-value off screen the other day because this p-value is too high. You know, I have the same microcontroller in other builds and that p-value is fine. Each build is going to be different. And that's that's the problem is in a lot of games, if you throw a motor in, uh, I don't know brick rigs, but I hear it's simple. But like space engineers, you throw a battery or an engine in a uh, uh, rocket motor in space engineers, it just works. That's not what this game is. You have to actually engineer and, you know, different mass vehicles. You know, this vehicle is heavy. So, you know, it needs to have a uh, a lower clutch zero. Uh, or, I'm sorry, a higher clutch zero because there's a lot of mass to stop. You know, these values all are here to change. So you'll get some controllers that people make in tutorials that are like, oh, just stick this in your vehicle and it will work. Well, that, that's problematic because... You know, they're trying to take a car microcontroller and stick it in a big heavy truck, and it just won't work. A truck is built different than a car. And so if you understand the concepts, I could take this tractor micro, which is for a tractor, and I could put it in a car, but guess what? I don't need as much torque out of the sucker. So I can probably go uh, clutch application RPS can be lower. Uh, this can be lower. You know, stuff like that, that, you know, if you understand the concept. So that's why I do, like, some of these longer tutorials is, you actually understand why something works, you then know how to fix it. And so I'm more interested in teaching people how to fix these problems than to just give them, you know, they call it rote learning, where you just say, oh, do this. You know, when somebody asks, hey, what p-value should I put on my engine? Oh, use 0.18. No, the real answer is what, you know, it's dependent upon your vehicle. Your vehicle needs a different p-value than any other vehicle ever built, you know, and you know, you probably could use 0.18 and it would be fine. That's what I use on most of my vehicles. But again, I, I built this the other day 
and 0.18 was too high. It was oscillating. So I went to point, I went to uh, point 0.1 and it works better. You know, and you really need to actually build for your own vehicle. And that sometimes is frustrating to people is they have to do the extra work. And I understand is if, if you don't understand the concepts, but that's why I like the longer format video is it makes it so that you can actually understand these concepts a little bit. Unrelated question, do you have a resent my barrel sub? What's that? I'm not sure what you're saying, Daniel, there. It's what the S-Z-E-N-T, uh, I'm not sure what that is. Have you sent my barrel sub? Oh, have I seen your barrel sub? I, I have seen it. I have not um, I have not downloaded and played with it yet. I did uh, look at some of the pictures, though. I've seen the pictures. All right, so here's a pump and toolboxes there. So that is there. I see what you're saying now. Okay, so that's, I'm liking that. That's a little bit lower profile than some of the other ones. I'm liking this. I have some good space in here for microcontrollers, which I left extra space for that. Okay. I want to get this up and running so that I can, uh, I thought it, I thought you were speaking to me. In, I thought you were speaking to me in German for a second. <laughs> have you sent my, have you sent my, <laughs> what? are you talking, speaking German? <laughs> oh, come on. Go this way. There we go. All right, this is going to go here. Let's. I want to get this thing plumbed up. I'm going to throw a trailer on it. I need to see how it behaves because that's going to be a problem. Is, uh, For example, I think I, I showed one of the live streams. I have a uh, shifter. Shifters are yard shifters. They're, they have a hydraulic fifth wheel, and the whole point of that is you don't have to crank the landing gear. It would take you all day if you had to run out and crank the landing gear. Plus, it, it beats up your body. You know, my poor broken body from crank and landing gear especially in the cold and so when you have uh, hub shifters what you do is you don't crank the landing gear you just lift it and the issue is with single axles on a lot of these tractors in game it really really does not like it it misbehaves um, okay so that is why did I plug that in like that okay what am I doing here we're in the right path here I just uh, not paying attention here okay impeller so one trick with the impeller okay Put the impeller where you want it. That's going to leave the torque on the right. So that leaves torque right here. So what you go is go to your torque pipe and then rotate it. And that's going to always orient it correctly so that the torque is where you want it. All right. So a little trick there. And please be air out. Oh, you suck. Uh, air out's right there. All right. So that's fine. What we'll do is we'll cut this, move it here. Uh, it's going to hit the tire. You suck, you suck, you suck. All right, uh, let's see. We'll back it up. All right. So that's a little trick with those impellers. Like, things like that. For example, people are having have issues with putting cats on things, uh, catalytic converters. So another trick with cats. When you do your cat, if this is exhaust coming from my engine, put it on there. And you'll always have the exhaust out on this side. So build it that way. Don't build it from, say, this is where your exhaust is going out. If you built the cat like this and you click on that, it will be backwards. So you want to do it that way. Uh, so little tricks there. Impeller, where you at? Imp. All right, so this will be correct if I go like that. So there's just some orientation tricks you can save yourself some frustration doing. What the hell? Uh, that's not where I want it. Uh, da -da -da -da. Okay, I, I know where I want this now. All right. Do this. I'm trying to make sure that I'm uh, just thinking of routing on this sucker. Glue it in. Okay, good. Perfect. Anyone else interested in Starfield? Anyone else looking forward to that coming out tomorrow? I know some people have been playing early. I think they got like Xbox Pass or some nonsense for, you know, early access if you uh, essentially do that. But looking forward to that. So mainly the thing with gearing is 
I, I again, I recommend the first thing I always do when I set up a gearbox is I look at a real gearbox. And what that does is that gives you the range between gears. Uh, if you remember the live stream the other day, I had that one gear for the for the uh, for this tractor, and I knew it was going to be uh, too too uh, long of a gear. The gear shift was going to be too much. What would happen in real life is it would it wouldn't necessarily stall, but it would lug. It would bring the RPS too low. Uh, in game, that's when you get some tire spin. It will tire spin it up, which is unrealistic, but that's what the game does. Um, but it works all right. You know, it's not terrible. And um, so by going via the real transmissions, the engineers have already figured that out for you. So stand on their shoulders and use numbers they've already done. Ford is very good for reporting all of, you know, most of their transmissions. You can find Ford's transmissions and start with that. And then what you want to do is, so for example, th what I did with this cab over to fix it was if we look on top of the transmission, and we look at my reverse gear here. I changed this ratio to a five to two. And what that did was that actually brought my gearing super, super duper low. So if we look at my, let me bring it up. I hate double click. Um, let's see. So here is the, where are we at? The 13 that we built the other day on stream. So here's the 13 we built the other day on stream. So first gear is a 12.31 IRL. And they're very close, right? I did 12.5, so we're close. So like you're talking about um, Exhorus, the um, the kind of the optimized, the, the distance between the gears. You'll notice these, w when you're in your low box, when you're running low gears, notice the, notice the differential between this gear and this gear. So these are all the real ones from the website. These are the real gearbox. These are real uh, ratios from the 13-speed IRL. So it's a 12.3 to an 8.6. So you figure that's about a four, uh, a four swing. All right, that's four, um, a multiplication of four swings. So it's going from a 12 to an eight. That's a big jump. Why can we make a big jump? We can make a big jump because we're we're uh, currently trading our RPS for torque. We're saying, hey, engine, give me more RPS, give me fewer wheel rotations. I want more power. So we still have a lot of power. So we need all this power to get that heavy mass of the vehicle moving. We can do a big jump because the engine is still producing a lot of torque. The wheels still get a lot of torque. As we start to get lower, now notice that's a four swing. That's now a 2.5 swing. That's now a 2.3 swing. That is a 1.2 swing. That is a less than a one swing. That is, uh, what? The, wow, that's like a 0 0.34 uh, swing. That is a 0 0.3, uh, less than a 0 0.3 swing. That is a 0 0.3 swing. And that is a 0 0.2 swing. That is a 0 0.17 swing. That is a 0 0.2 swing. And that is a 0 0.2 one swing. So you see, as we get higher in the gears, the differential gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And the reason is this, you're trading away your power for speed. Eventually, you're not going to be able to have enough power to shift gears. You know, you're going to be revving to red line. So say, if these were too far apart, what would happen is, let's say you're trying to jump from this gear to this gear, you'd be at red line, okay? The engine would be at red line, and then when you shift to this gear, the engine would stall because the RPS was too low. So you can't do big jumps when you go in the, into your higher gears. You notice how small the differential, the changes get. And you notice how big they can be here. We still have a lot of power in our engine. Now we've traded so much power away to give a speed, we can only make small gear changes because we would stall otherwise. So that's another thing to think about when you're trying to set up your gears, but again, you don't have to do this on your own. Go online and do this. And the way the way that I actually kind of got it uh, figured out the way to do that overdrive system in here where I changed this box was what I ended up doing was my, this the uh, that cab over would do like 111 miles an hour. Well, guess what? The real 1980s cab over does not do 111 miles an hour. It does about 65. And so what I and, you know, I could figure out the math. Remember, we we're talking tire radius. The tire uh, diameter on this diameter, I've been going over diameter more than radius because I can get more accuracy with that. So 
that's five blocks. The real one is this big. So we are turning an extra, say, meter per rotation. So what we need to do is I could figure out the precise math, but I don't need to. What I can do is all I did was I kept going in here and I kept uh, increasing this number until the until the speeds were correct. So, you know, at 13th gear, I should be able to haul, uh, I should be going about 65 miles an hour. And that's what I did was, so in 13th gear, my my cab over, it goes 65 miles an hour, just like it should. Now, the, the numbers are now different than real life, but the tires are bigger in game than they are in real life. So that's accounting for the tire size. So I hope that makes some sense. But essentially, you know, use real life numbers. What speed does this go in real life? Okay. What speed am I going? Okay. Well, that means my tires are too big or they're too small. Okay. I can either try to change this tire size or what I could do is I could uh, just go in here and start increasing this gear ratio. This reduces the gears. And so now my new number on that cab over, it's like a 30 to 1 is my gear ratio. You know, so it's, it's a very high gear ratio because... You know, it's a very low gear ratio, rather, uh, because, you know, the tires are too big. So, you know, your tire is your final gear. And if you change your final gear, your speeds are going to be all off. So what you do is you go back in and you just keep uh, changing that gear, this uh, overdrive here, essentially, until you're getting the speeds where you want them. I'm just reading some stuff here. Oh, uh, yep. I'm glad you enjoyed uh, today's video. Yep. Yep. You know, uh, have Miles, have you looked at my uh, my cooling tutorial? You know, it shows the main thing you need for ship. Ships are easy now because as long as you keep the temperature of the engine under 100 degrees. Uh, you don't have to worry about scaling. And so you can do raw water cooling. You can take water right from the ocean, and you can just suck that water up and use that. And that's going to be your most efficient method of cooling is raw water cooling. And you can do that without um, having to worry about scaling as long as you keep the temperature below um, 100 degrees. So that is what I recommend everybody does now. Um, that's having issues with their ship cooling, just use raw water cooling. You do not need to overcomplicate it. Use raw water cooling, just pull water right from the ocean, put it through the cooling manifolds. And what you want to do is uh, you want to reduce your uh, thrust until uh, you get below. Um, so you, you essentially want to put an overheat protection system in there. Now, the other thing in game is, the way we operate in game is we don't, you know, you don't keep the, generally you don't keep the vehicle out in the world for like 20 days, right? You take it out on a mission, you put it back in the workbench. Well, guess what happens? All the damage is repaired. So theoretically, if you damage your engines by feeding them or your cooling system by feeding it salt water, it gets fixed every time you put it back in the workbench. So, you know, you don't really have to worry about it even if you do get scaling, but you can easily make it so that you just keep adding raw water cooling. You could theoretically, if you have an eight cylinder engine, you could, you know, put in, well, with the manifold pieces, you could put, you know, 10 coolant manifolds with pumps to do raw water cooling. You should have no problem cooling with raw water cooling. So I'd suggest that try raw, raw water cooling, see if you can't keep that ship cool. But the, ba the main thing always with, with, uh, with cooling is flow rates. If the flow rate is oscillating, you're getting zero cooling. So people will have these cooling systems, and their uh, liters per second is flopping all over the place. They're getting no cooling. If you have 65, 65, you're getting good cooling. So that's the main thing you need to uh, think about when you're cooling. How's it going, Dano? Dano. Why are you? Yep, I think it'll be fun to do some Starfield on stream. It's a little bit more arcadey than I'd like, but again, that's kind of... They'll do modding later. We'll see how I like it. Yeah, I was thinking of doing maybe some American truck at some point. The big thing is, that, like, for games like that and Flight Sim, I have to go set up my wheel and everything and get that all set up, so that sometimes slows things down. All right, I'll start banging some micros in here. I'm just going to start throwing them everywhere, try to get this going. I want to... 
want to try to crank this, get this going. I have plenty of space for micro trolls. That whole floor pan, because I have all this space for passengers in the back, I should be able to really punch a bunch of micro controls in the floor here and have no problem. I'm just trying to finish up chat here. What feels like cheating? The raw water cooling? Yes. Yep, the more you shift, the higher you go up in the box. You don't get anything for free. You're either trading your RPS of the engine for more torque. So you're making the engine spin many times for one rotation of the wheel. That gives you lots of power. As you try to go faster, you're now saying, okay, I'm going to give up some torque for speed. Giving up more torque for speed, more torque for speed, more torque for speed. And at the end, you're, you have very little torque. But, right, an object in motion wants to stay in motion. So you don't need a lot of torque once you're moving. But to get moving, you really need to rev up. You need a lot of uh, torque. And so that's the thing is you're always trading. You don't get anything for free. And that's, you know, that's you'll see a lot of new players. They'll go, you know, I, I keep increasing my gear ratio. Now I'm going slower. It doesn't make any sense. It makes perfect sense is you've given up so much power you now have like a little lawnmower engine trying to move a huge vehicle because you've traded all that power for speed. And so the, at that point, once you've, uh, once increasing the ratio, you know, decreases speed, you need a bigger engine, period. You know, that's just what you need. And so once you kind of understand that concept, it's like, okay, I'm starting to, you know, lose speed. All right, I just need a bigger engine. All right, I'll put more cylinders in. That's why I don't like, I don't do anything with the other engines. I don't do any tutorials on the on the pre-built engines. Don't do it because you get to that point where you know, it's it, they're frustration machines because what's going to happen is you're going to put in one of those pre-builts and you're going to need like 10% more power to get the desired results you want and you're not going to be able to get it because you're going to get to the point where all you need is one more cylinder in that engine, and it's going to work perfectly like a dream, exactly how you want it. And you're not going to be able to get it because, you know, you have the prefab, and now you have to add an entire extra prefab. You have to add 100% more motor, and you only want 10%. Well, with modulars, you can add just the 10% if you want it. So that's why I don't even talk about the other ones is, you know, you can't put your exhaust where you want. You can't put these things where you want. Modulars are king. I don't even discuss the other ones you know they're a shortcut and you know the shortcut just isn't worth it all right let's see what else do we need here let's paint 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 i to get a little bit of this building done i right, was grabbing as much of this stuff i'm just throwing some of these in i want to get this plumbed up and i want to get a trailer on i need to decide am i putting a second axle on there it's it's easy peasy for me to do it's not a big deal but um I would rather not. Most of them don't have uh, tw twin screws. They're all single screws, so I'd rather keep that if I can. What are you? What are you, sir? Um, sir, madam, mirror. Okay, here's my mirrors. You know, this is another thing, you know, uh, the devs have been giving us some really good updates. You know, I think some of the Steam and Reddit community who are pretty negative you know, they don't, uh, they, they count all the misses. They don't count the hits. And so some of the hits, dude, I love this gimbal update. It's so cool, man. Uh, I put it in here. You guys haven't seen it. I did it off screen. But I put in a, uh, a mirror controller, and I can move my mirrors. I can adjust my mirrors. And that's all because of that update the devs did. That was really a cool update. All right, let's see. What do we have? So check connections here. I'm going to go through all the connections, see what's still connected back here. Batteries, tanks, okay. Radiator. I think we're, we're looking good on pulling all the micros out of here, I think. Yeah, see, I, we have no micros left in there, so that is gorgeous. Okay, good. All right, so we're pretty good here. All right, let's, uh, we're going to do a drop test. The ass is very light in this. It does not matter that the rear axle is, is light because this is going to have a permanently affixed trailer. The trailer is not coming off of this. They're permanently affixed. Like, they could they could pull a pin, but likely they're just pinned on. Um, all right, so that is pretty good. Let's try... Oh, look, door control doesn't work. So right here, here are my mirrors. Again, this is... I love the gimbal update. So I set this so the mirror looks good. Watch this. 
Uh, is electricity hooked up? There it is. See it? Can move our mirrors now. All because of that. Um, oh, it's right here. That's why I was pressing the wrong button. We can adjust our mirrors now. All because of that gimbal update. That was huge. Like, you used to have to put a pivot there. There was no way you were going to pivot that. It would make your mirror look ugly. So you just had to live with the fact that your mirrors were useless. Now they're not useless. So, again, you know, when the devs screw up, they need to be slapped when they... Uh, I, I don't mean literally. I mean, you know, figuratively. And when they do something well, but they need their pat on their back. And so they get a pat on the back for that. That was a huge update for me. That was awesome. All right. Let's see. Infant electricity should be on. So, oh, I didn't hook up any of the engine stuff. <laughs> let's do that. So I'm going to take a little break from chat just so I can get building here. All right. Uh, we got to hook all this up. So engines all here. We have Spado. Tack. So uh, Citrus will probably appreciate this. Citrus, uh, unfortunately, uh, ripped apart the Mac and found how comp how uh, convoluted that is. The Mac was, I did not like, I did not, the Mac was a, was a learning experience to get that going. So a lot of the panel was very convoluted and not very good. And uh, so this, my new panels for this cab over are gonna be the gold standard for my chassis. So one of the reasons I built the cab over was to get us ready for me to release the chassis. And so the chassis will, again, there'll be a frame, engine, transmission, all you have to, uh, it'll have the seats, all the engine, all the, all the stuff in the cockpit, and then you can add whatever you want to it to build your own truck. And it's, so most of the, most of the guts are there. And so uh, these new panels are up to the gold standard. Things are where they belong. Everything is, it's not convoluted. I don't have a bunch of pass-through panels. I know Citrus went through there and was, uh, was seeing how screw, screwed up that was because that was uh, the Mac was based off of my Maz. My Maz was actually my first. Um, it was the first uh, first land vehicle I ever built. And so it was, uh, you know, that's one reason why I like to build with new panels is sometimes it's better just to build with a new panel because you're uh, you're not you know, your your building skills are better and you're not building with some weird nonsense you used to do. You're building with kind of, you know, your updated standard. Okay, let's go like this. All right, let's build our fuel tanks. We need them now anyway. So symmetry, please. Thank you. All right. Ah, come on, man. I, I can't see the black on black here to see what the hell I'm looking at. There we go. All right. We don't need an enormous amount of fuel. Remember, these are just moving around cities. They're not going, they're not going, you know, far-flung places. They're moving around the cities. But custom tanks will help us get this. Um, I don't know why I did that one instead of this. Yeah. So that is uh, now with the kind of the updated standard for me on these engines. It's going to be much better to try to uh, get those chassis out. Oh, come on. Get out of there, you devil. Right, come on, man. Just give me the right thing. All right. That's going to be air intake. I'm just going to throw a filter on here. Uh, you tend to, you know, if you've ever seen like, you know, a flooded area and you see pictures in the news of a flood, you'll see that the tractor trailers are just driving right through it. And then you'll see a, a car foolishly drive through it. And the reason a tractor trailer can go through it is the, like, say on this, the air intake is right here. The air intake is 13 feet off the ground. So as, as long as the water is not 13 feet deep, the tractor will go right through it. The other thing is a car will float. A tractor will not float. The tractor is incredibly heavy. It is not going to float. And so you'll see that people will get themselves in trouble. They'll drive. They'll see a tractor drive through the water and they'll drive through the water. And it's like, dude, the tractor's snorkel is, or this tractor's inlet is 13 feet off the ground. Yours is like, you know, a couple feet off the ground. And the tractor also uh, is incredibly heavy. It's not going to float. The car will float. 
And so that's when people get in trouble. So it's like, well, you shouldn't be driving. You shouldn't try to be going in the water is, um, you know, the trucks can go right through there. They're not going to float and they're not going to, um, they're not going to lose their air. You know, the cars will. And, you know, you get these mows that go driving through it and get themselves in trouble, you know. So do not drive in there if you do not have the proper equipment. So eventually I will, so long story short with that is I'm gonna put the snorkel up top where it belongs. Not that we drive through the water much or would in this vehicle, but um, you know, we could. All right, so that's plumbed, I need ex exhaust. Um, I don't think any of these have really big stacks on them. Any of these, I'm trying to look at uh, yeah, I think they all have under exhausts. They're not really, um, they're not doing high exhaust on them. Generally, you have a high exhaust so that it doesn't paint the trailer with a, with um, exhaust. So I'm just going to throw a couple uh, low exhausts in here for now just to get us going for, um, I want to test this out. So. Just gonna throw something on here. I'm gonna put cats, and I might, I might put stacks. I, I might put stacks on this just to, because I like the look of stacks. All right, uh, make sure we're all hooked up here. Alternator. I'm running one alternator. Generally, I don't need. What the hell was that? That was alternator. I plugged it in the wrong one. Air manifold. Tack speedo. Fuel. Pump clutch. Right there. Okay, clutch. The other thing too is trying to keep your boat cooled. You know, um, when you talk about that is, you know, you need to um, not run it in the same RPS. You know, running as low as you can get it, you're not going to produce a ton of heat. You know, that really helps a lot. So, I'm going to kill the music for a second. Start listening to the uh, engine. Check some chat. Okay, exhaust on there, fuel, uh, did I, plumb, I plumbed the fuel. Oh, I didn't put spawners in. <coughs> that happens all the time, forget spawners. All right, that'll do it, no fuel. So I want this to be front heavy because that trailer is gonna sit on that rear axle. I need it balanced, so. How many starters do you have? Why is my tack not hooked up? I need a, oh, you know what? I didn't hook up the engine. Uh, engine is not connected. I always forget this because it's um, separate. Engine needs to be hooked up there. Tack, where is my tack? RPS, okay, all this stuff needs to be hooked up. I haven't hooked up any of this stuff. RPS right there. Oh, I don't want to hook the flywheel. It doesn't matter. Flywheel will read the same, but I want it hooked to the crank. Uh, I think we're good. Spawn. Let me read some of the chat and see it moving. Try to keep going, keep up with the chat. Hopefully, you can not run the AC for a little while. That would be nice. The salt stuff is a thing, but it's only over 100 degrees. So as long as you keep it under 100 degrees, you don't have to worry about following the uh, cooling system. You know, so that's the only thing. <clears throat> so one thing to try in your boats too: make sure the outflow valves, are, the outflow ports, are above the water line. If you're fighting water pressure, you're not going to get good flow rates. So that's what I see a lot of people have problems with: is they're trying to pump out. If it's a big ship, you're pumping out deep underwater. There's too much water pressure. Bring it up to the water line. You'll notice on Triton, all my outflow valves uh, are at the water line, so that I'm not fighting uh, against water pressure to get the to get the volume out. Now that that video was made last night. Yep. I put that video up just after midnight.
It's just it was scheduled to come out. Yeah, that's, um, you know, try not to get on my rant subjects, but uh, subject C, uh, you're talking about most of the negativity I've seen is is about the game not being fixed and unplayable and that the SNR theme has faded away when you can literally still do SNR, Coast Guard, related things. Yeah, I think, you know, there are some people who hype themselves up very early in this game. And they thought this was going to be an ultra-hardcore search-and-rescue game. Now, I've talked about this before, how that is an incredibly small audience. Somebody who is willing to put in hundreds of hours to learn how to build things just to do search-and-rescue. That is an incredibly tiny audience. You need to expand the game so that enough people want to play. I do a lot of search-and-rescue, but I would probably be bored myself if it was just search-and-rescue. And it's gatekeeping. Let people play the game how they want to play it. And that's that's kind of what they're doing there. And it's still there. Nobody took the search and rescue out. You know, you know. so I agree with your point. You know, nobody took the search and rescue out of this game. It's still there. Oh, I'll show you my air brake system here. Um, nobody took the search and rescue out. It's still there. You know, but they're, you know, they're offended that the game that they imagined in their mind is not here. And I can understand, that, you know, and you have to think about it from the devs' perspective, too. Again, the devs, if if you just had an incredibly difficult or an incredibly in-depth building game where you had to spend hundreds of hours to learn all the mechanics and you actually had to learn some real engineering and you actually have to sit through hour-long tutorials that Captain makes, oh my god, to learn the concepts and the only thing you could do was search and rescue, it would appeal to an incredibly small audience. My prediction would be this. If search, if the Space DLC is not a mess, like I mean like real, real hot garbage, if it's if it's pretty good, it doesn't have to be incredible. It has to just be pretty good. I bet you they're going to get a lot more sales. And the reason is this. You have a lot of people who have been playing Space Engineers, like I was, but it, were super bored by how simplistic the building was. I hated in Space Engineers, one, the blocks were too big, two, uh, you couldn't, like, you put a battery on a ship, it magically works. I hated that. I love hooking up electrical systems. I love coming up with complex things. I don't want to use the default door they give me. I want to make my own door. I don't want to use this default thing they give me. I want to make my own system. You know, and so there are probably a lot of people playing space engineers who are probably uh, pretty sick of space engineers or have gotten to where they want to be with space engineers or, you know, would like something a little bit more complex in the building department than space engineers who are going to come over here. There are a lot of people who are pissed off about Kerbal 2. I tried putting in a refund the other day. I only have 1.5 hours. They denied it because it's months old. But Kerbal 2's taking a big face plant, you know. And so you're going to have a lot of those people who, you know, they like the theme of space. But they don't need orbital mechanics, or they don't want orbital mechanics, or they don't want to learn orbital mechanics. The main thing for them is building. And they're going to come over. I would think Space DLC is going to be a big, popular DLC. And I think a lot of those people who are saying space is stupid, why they do this, blah, blah, blah. And I've talked about this at length. You know, they put out a poll. That was on the poll. They've done everything in order, pretty much, of the poll that they could. And they've come out in order, and that was what people asked for. And you see that, you know, uh, Steam discussions and Reddit was pretty negative. But guess what? Steam and Reddit are pretty negative. If you go in all the discords, people are building a ton of space stuff. They're excited, man. There's buggies. There's space stations. Like, oh, my God, dude, somebody built a space station. It had to take hundreds of hours to build them. Let's bring it up. Dude, this thing is incredible. Um, and it's on the workshop already. You know, I just saw it right here. Look at this thing. This thing's cool, man. They they already built a space station, man. You know, this this is cool. People are going to love this. Now, not everybody's going to love it. And guess what? It wasn't necessarily even the update that I wanted. I would have preferred fishing. But guess what? I don't poop on other people's fun. You know what? Not everything has to be about me. And so there is some selfishness in there where people are just going nuts and losing their minds. And, oh, my God, nobody wanted this. Yes, people wanted this. They did a poll. It's, you know, get over it, you know. 
So I think it's going to be successful. So, yeah, I agree with you, Subject C. It, you know, nobody took your, your Coast Guard away. It's still there. You know, <laughs> I just don't get that. It's just it's silly. Yep, Mirror Block would be awesome. Um, you know, Farming Sim had Mirror Blocks. Well, it, they didn't have it innate in, in Farming Sim. People made them, and you could rotate them, and it was pretty cool. So that would be thinner, like a thin Mirror Block, like this big. It could still have a full collision this big. That would be fine. Nobody would have a problem with that. But you know what would be awesome? This is what they should do. Make a thin mirror block about that thick, right? Because they could do it with HUDs, right? They can make them that thick. It would still have this full collision, but the mirror would be here. And even put it in the middle. Yeah, put it right in the middle and let us rotate it. And so it has a composite input. We have we can string different size mirror blocks together and then let us rotate them. That would be sick, 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 and sick. That would be awesome. That would be a good one. Yep, so I agree with that. Mirror block would be awesome. Yep, yeah, I think it's it's very much, you know, it's a theme. You know, the game needed to start out with a theme. Let me quickly start this up. So um, if you look at my air tanks, notice my air tank only has 3.9 PSI. All right, in real life, you can't remove the parking brake if the air pressure is not above, you, it's more than 20, but 20 is when they snap on. I made it a little bit easier so you don't have to worry about it too much. But, for example, uh, let me show you real quick. So my brakes are on. Okay, my my tractor brakes are on. Let's go look at the brakes. So, brake true, okay? We jump in here. I shut the brake off. Brake true. And that's how it'd be in real life. In real life, if I push this uh it's a valve. If I push the valve in, the valve would pop right back out if I didn't have enough air pressure. And so what you need to do is we put it in neutral. We're in neutral and I rev And watch my air tanks fill. So my air tanks are filling with air. It's simulated, of course. And so we're going to fill our air tanks up. And this is something you do every day in tractor trailers. You you drain them out to test the warning systems and to make sure the brakes spring on. The brakes should come on. Like if you go below 20 PSI, the brakes will come on in a tractor. Okay, so we're at 120 PSI. This is when the compressor would cut out. You'd, you, you know, if you ever hear a truck go, tss, when it's sitting at a light, that means it hit 120 psi or around there, and the uh, the the uh, blow off valve stopped. The compressor will usually stop. Now, when you the way we would test air brakes IRL is you stomp on the brake pedal, and notice as I stomp on the air brake uh, the brake pedal, the air pressure comes down. So now if we go out, the brakes are on. Let's shut them off. Now let's look at the brakes. Breaks false. So this allows me, so I need over 20 PSI on either side to be able to, um, is that a trim on? I don't. I need over 20 PSI on either side and this button off to shut the brakes off. So that's kind of cool. That's just a, you know, that's how it's done IRL. So let's go ahead and uh, get moving. So that's that gear. Remember I was talking when we did the um, the cab over live stream? I said one of the gears was longer than it should be. This is it. So if we look, when I shift gear here, watch my tack. Oh, my tack's not hooked up. God damn it. Uh, watch what happens when I shift up. See the engine lugged? It went, Ugh. And that's because the gear is too high. The, the differential uh, between the gears... Remember I said like the, the lower gears, you can go like three or four between. That was That's more than that. And so it kind of lugs a little bit. But I'm digging this so far. It's uh, looking good. I'm glad I built the cab over just for some, some cab shaping. That helped with that. You know, theoretically, um, it is within the rules. I could have just taken the cab over and used that, but I didn't want to. I wanted to be a little bit more. You know, it says right in the rules as long as you start it after August 19th, which I believe I started the cab over definitely after August 19th. So I could have just used the cab over. But, you know, I, I like to build something new, and I wanted to be bespoke. And, you know, I'm very big on, you know, being as fair as I can when I compete in challenges. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to you know, have anything pre-built. I want to do it. So this is working well. This is, you know, 
Got a got the 13 speed, and you see how it's misbehaving. It doesn't want to drive right. That's because all the weight's in the front, and that's perfect because, uh, you know, I was talking about how if you put too much mass on on a single axle in game, it will start to sink underground. And so what this should do is should help it so that the mass of the trailer is um, is not pushing that down too much. So that's good. But look at my poor cab over. <laughs> All right, so let me check some chat here. Yeah, but uh, definitely, you know, subject C, I, you know, exactly with that. And mirror blocks would be nice. You know, the I talked about this in one of the live streams too. Is the thing that this game is best at? You know, it's it's funny. The people who are very much uh, search and rescue diehards, they're also a bunch of the people who will complain that the the game isn't great at search and rescue. And so the devs, in order to make the game marketable, they have to take what's the mo the best part of the game, which I would say is building, and I would say a lot of people would probably agree is the building component of it, and that's what they need to uh, that's what they need to expand on. And so what they're doing is they're they're giving us this um, you know they're giving us this great vehicle building game, and then they're adding different things. So if you're really into trains, well, guess what? You have the best vehicle building game there is, in my opinion, and you can build trains. You know, if you're into ships, we have the best vehicle building game, in my opinion, and you can build uh, ships, you can build trucks, you can build all this stuff. And that's where I think this game really shines is, uh, is as a vehicle builder. And that's, you know, they're taking the best element of this game, the vehicle builder, and they're expanding what we can do, which, you know, giving us more to do, I, I don't know how people will see that as a bad thing. I just really don't, you know. You know, and if you if you want to still do search and rescue, like you said, nobody took that away. They can do still do search and rescue, and they're just adding to it. You know, they're adding fun for more for a larger group of people, which means that guess what? You don't have to pay for more DLC. You don't have to worry about the game getting shut down and them working on a different unrelated project. You know, they're still working on the game you love because other people are willing to pay for it for new content. You know, so I think it's great. I'm just checking some chat here. Yep, yeah, the uh, gimbal was great for orientation of headlights. That was awesome. Chat's jumping on me, so I'm just trying to trying to check really quick. Trying to get through chat really quick. I'm just seeing it moving. Why does my engine take a solid seconds to reach more than two RPS? I'm only using small flywheel. Uh, put more starters on. You know, my my three by threes have like four starters per, and they start right up. Also, are you do you have the clutch engaged? Some people leave the clutch engaged. So, like this this truck engine here is a twenty cylinder. It has one starter on it. You know, starts right up. It takes a, it takes a little bit. If I put two starters on, it'd be even faster. But you know. Running the ship engine on 12 RPS with a 9.5 to get 18 RPS to the propeller. 3 by 3 with 7 cylinders. So what what speed are you getting on? What uh, what knots, how many knots are you getting on that? That's got to be close to 25 if it's 18 RPS. I don't know what you mean. Try to cut off as many elbows as possible, Johnny. Oh, for uh, for cooling, you're still on the cooling. Yeah, make the the clutch should be zero on start. You don't want the clutch engaged. You know, when you're starting a manual vehicle, you push the clutch all the way in to disengage the clutch. Yep, you need an auto clutch. So go check out uh, the uh, AFR stoichiometry module engine tutorial. Uh, five minutes and fifty eight seconds. <laughs> There's a uh, timestamp that talks about the auto clutch. Yep, you're trying to start the vehicle. You can literally move a a, a semi with the starter. You know, uh, if you leave the clutch engaged, if you forget to push the clutch in, it will move the semi with the brakes on. That's how powerful the starter is. You know, so you don't want all that extra back pressure. The clutch should be zero at start because you you don't want to be moving the transmission. The transmission should be. That's the whole point of the clutch is to disconnect the transmission from the uh, from the uh, output shaft.
Yep. Though that's the thing, Miles. You know, I I I would also predict that the um, space DLC is going to be very big. I think there are a lot of people who are at their end with start with space engineers. Um, I was. I was getting bored because I couldn't I couldn't get as in depth in building as I would like. I couldn't make things look the way I wanted. You know, Stormworks is lacking for enough blocks theoretically, but because these blocks are so small, we can make some really cool looking stuff. We can make a truck look like a truck. You know, in Space Engineers, the blocks are much bigger. You can't make things look the way you want them to look. And so it, it becomes a cartoony goofy. And, you know, the thing with the reason why I can pump 5,000 hours into uh, Stormworks is because the depth allows me to build whatever I want. I wanted an air brake system. I spent hours the other day working on my air brake system, and it's super cool to me, and it makes me laugh because, oh, I, it was cool. I get to put an air brake system in my truck, and that is what's awesome with this game, and that's why I think you're going to get a lot of people who have been playing a space game like Space Engineers who want a more complex space game and want and uh, are going to be thrilled with that. So I think it's going to be, be very popular. Plus, there's a lot of people here already that, you know, that uh, want it, you know. Yep. <laughs> the Tantrum Squad, I like that. Yep, brake noise would be cool. Um, I wonder if with pressurization, if we'll get a little bit of air noise. That would be cool. I wanted, I was going to save off on working on the air brakes until we got pressurization. All right, so I'm liking the toolboxes. Toolboxes look good. I think this is almost done. This needs to come. So this is my, if you, uh, if you watch the other live stream, so these lights will cast a little bit of light through the floor, uh, through blocks. I'll put a little halo through that. And the little dome light I have is not bright enough to really do anything. So by doing this at night, it can be very dark in the cockpit. So you do this, it will make it so that you can uh, you can actually have a little bit of light going into the uh, cockpit, into the cab. All right, good. So that is, I think we're almost done here. I'm trying to get to the, okay, uh, directionals need to come. Let's check with steps. I might put some of the step work in there. All right, so step's going to go there. I want this to be directional there, I think. Put side directions. Trying to get rid of the cab over and be ready on this. So I what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, heavy trailer on the back of this to do a test to make sure that we are we are we're good with uh seeing if I need a second axle. That's what I want to do. Right there. Okay, good. What else do I need to rip off of this? I think we're pretty good. I'll do the steps custom. Ketis, what is that? That's where's my physics sensor? Do I have anything? I'm just checking for physics sensors right here. This has to go. Okay. I you know the physics sensor. Another applause to the devs. That was something that was a huge benefit that they added was the physics sensor that was huge you know and it's uh that's something that i think is underappreciated it um you know it really is an excellent update the physics sensor you know it takes a, it takes so many blocks and now makes it down to one and you know one thing i wish they would do is a miniaturization pass where we can build some much smaller stuff you know, and that's that's a step in the right direction for that is like when I build a tiny little four by four, like a, a, a four wheeler, you know, I want to be able to build something tiny sometimes. And, you know, you're building like building my ultralight. It was hard to build because it was so small. And so when they add something like a physics sensor, that takes that gives you so much space. That was a really phenomenal update. That was really great. You know, so I think they're doing good work. You know, it's. You know, there have been a couple of good posts on Reddit where people like, I don't understand all the people complaining about bugs. I've literally never run into any bugs. And I have run into some bugs, but it is not all that bad. And I've talked about it a little bit, and I know some people would probably take offense to it, is, you know, you, uh, you know, some of the, the issue that people will call bugs is the way they engineered something. And they didn't engineer something really correctly, and they say it's a bug where it's not really a bug is they just didn't understand 
you know, how to build it correctly. And that, I can understand, it can be frustrating if you don't understand how to build something correctly. But that's really not the game's fault, you know, is it? You know, and so that's uh, sometimes that they'll they'll take the blame for, you know, you didn't, you, you know, for example, people say, oh, the planes in Stormark suck. They don't suck. You know, I build I build perfectly good planes, but one of the reasons I'm able to build good planes is because, you know, I have a degree in aeronautical science. So I know a little bit more than the average bear on that subject. And the answer is not to freak out. The answer is, hey, man, I'm struggling building planes. How do I build a better plane? And asking, and that's why I build, make some tutorials is, you know, it's not the game's fault. It's, you know, just maybe you're not building it correctly. But, you know, there definitely are bugs. But, you know, some people don't want to hear that. They don't, oh, I should probably save this. I have yet to save this. It will be in the backups folder, but. So let's see, fire croc. Kick it. All right, let's grab a heavy-ass trailer. So uh, where are we? Okay, I know where we are. All right, good. So let's go ahead. This is saved. Let's uh, move. I will show you my uh, show you my, mass, my demonstrator. This is my, my heavy demonstrator here. So the other thing is when I, when I uh, re-geared with the overdrive system, the, the overdrive there for the cab over, I can haul both water trailers up to, I think, 65 miles an hour now. So... Uh, because the, instead of being a 12.3 to 1 gear ratio, it's now a 30. So I have traded all, a huge amount of RPS away for power, and that really helps me uh, actually have a usable truck, you know, to do some, some real stuff. All right, so here it is. Where are we at here? Here it is. Here is my, uh, here's my test rig for mass. If, if it can haul this, it can haul anything. Because like I said, there's a quarter million pounds of water. So let me check. I don't think I have spawners in here. I gotta throw them in there. Yeah, I see it on Reddit. Reddit's a pretty negative place. I I try to take as much negativity out of my life as possible. It's just life's too short to be negative. But it's um you know, it's like some of the things in there, it's you can see it's clearly, you know, an in, an engineering problem. And and I don't give people a lot of crap for getting frustrated because you know what, they spent three, four hours working on something. They're frustrated. And I do it myself. Sometimes I get frustrated and I'm a little bit grouchy. And, um, you know, so I get it. But it's, um, see, this is what I was talking about. See the squat? So what we'll do is we'll have to put a second axle in there to account for the squat. But, um, oh, I don't have a, a light cord here. All right, so we're having a squat issue already. So that's that's to be expected. Let's cut out the water and see how it squats. Because this trailer is probably not going to be too heavy. So I'm going to save some space in here for the uh, for a second axle. Because we're probably going to need it. The game likes to do that. It pushes you underground. So let's uh, let's drop this the landing gear and see how it squats. Okay, so see it doesn't squat. That was an insane amount of water in there. So it definitely needs a double axle for the water. I'm hoping to keep it single axle like this. We shall see. We shall see. We shall see. We shall see. Because I would ideally like to keep it single axle like this, so that would be my preference. Let's just check some chat here. I want to try to keep uh, up with you guys. Johnny, do you understand what a clutch is and how it works and like the mechanics of it? I can quickly go through it if you'd like. Because one, and th again, this is the thing. Like somebody could tell you in a short five-minute tutorial, they could say, hey, when starting, you want to make sure that, you know, you want to hook this node here. And so you say, okay, I have to hook this node to here, but you don't understand why. And so if you understand, okay, you're going to hook this node to here because when you start, you don't want the clutch to be attached. And so, you know, let's see if I can find engine clutch. Let's see. Engine clutch. Transmission diagram. Look at that. Engine clutch transmission diagram. You know, that's one of the things that's getting lost is every generation that, like, you know, for example, people forgot how to ride horses, you know, except for recreation because of it, you know, because we stopped riding horses for transportation. And people are forgetting how to use manual transmissions, and I'm very much against that. But so, like, here's your engine, all right, and here's your clutch. What the clutch does is it separates the engine from the transmission, and the engine always needs to spin. 
And so in our case, we need at least two RPS to maintain compression for the engine. And that's what the whole what it's simulating is compression to maintain the engine running. If you're stopped at a stoplight, your brakes are on, right? So this axle is not moving. If this axle is not moving, guess what? The transmission, this output shaft that goes out to your uh, to your drive shaft and to your drive wheels is not moving. This output shaft is not moving, okay? And so, and the, these wheels are touching the pavement. So what's going to happen is if you come up to a stoplight, and you let off of the clutch in a car, let's say a car, because a car doesn't have a lot of torque, it's going to stall. And what the reason it's stalling is these are stopped. They're braked. These are stopped. That means this is stopped, this is stopped, this is stopped, your output shaft, your input shaft is stopped. And so what that means is if your clutch is engaged, in, in the case of a car, if your foot is off the pedal when you stop, so say you come up to a stoplight and you just press the brake, you never put your foot in the clutch, What's going to happen is the brakes are going to break all of this. It's going to go through the clutch, and it's going to break your engine. And guess what's going to happen? Your engine's going to go below compression, and it's going to stall and stop. Your engine did not reach enough speed to compress the air to maintain running. So you stall your engine. So what happens is when you come to a stop, what you want to do is you want to uh, push your brake, and you want to push in the clutch. Now, in a... In a car, you push it all the way to the floor. In a tractor, you don't do that. You'll hit the clutch brake, and you'll blow your clutch brake. You put it in a little bit. And so what you're doing now is this is braked, this is braked, this is braked, this is braked, this is braked. This is now separated. The clutch is no longer touching the uh, other plate. And so the engine can spin freely, and all of this is braked, but this is still spinning. Now when you want to go, you start taking your foot off the clutch, pedal and you start giving it some power and now you're giving some of your power through here to get this all moving again and then as it gets moving you take your foot all the way off the clutch and now this engine is connected to all of this and they're turning at the same rate this is at whatever rps it is multiplied through here turn your wheels so that's why when you're starting you need to push in the clutch pedal in a car because you're now trying to use the starter to start the engine, but you're also using the starter to try to move the wheels, and your parking brake is on. So you're gonna st you're never gonna be able to get started because you're trying to move your wheels with the with the starter. So I uh, hope th that makes sense. Oh my God, I didn't show you the friggin' I'm sorry guys, I didn't click over the display capture. Ugh! that's frustrating guys. Sorry guys, uh, let me fix that. Sorry, I'm gonna have to go through that again. I I apologize. I pressed the wrong button. So I'll go through it really fast again. Oh my God! Just give me the picture, you scum. All right. So you uh, you know your wheels are braked on the ground. So all of this is stopped when you're stopped. The the uh, axle shafts are stopped. The uh, drive shafts are stopped. Output input shafts are stopped. If your clutch is engaged, if your foot's not on the pedal when you try to start your engine, your engine is now trying to turn all of this stuff that has brakes and it's touching the asphalt. When you push your clutch in, you're disengaging the clutch. The plates are now not touching each other. The engine can spin freely, and this can all be braked. And then when you go to start, as you let your foot off the clutch, you're passing some of this engine power through. Some of the power of the engine is used to maintain compression, and some of it goes through here. Once you get up to speed, you can let your foot all the way off the clutch, and now you have enough motion that um, you know the compression's taking care of itself, and you're passing power through. And as you go downhill, it's actually called engine braking. What's going to happen is as you go down a hill, right, the wheels are going to try to spin faster because of gravity, and the engine is going to slow you down because now on the um, compression stroke, that is causing resistance, and it helps slow you down. So actually, it helps when I press display capture. So sorry about that, guys. Showed you big. You got to see nothing while I was explaining. So that makes sense there, Johnny? Yep, brake. Yeah, air brake would be really cool. <laughs> that's a that's a little bit early there, Brian. We'll see. Jetpack DLC. Yeah, jetpack will be cool. Okay. 
trying to see what you talked about. In reality, the tanks have some sort of blades inside that compartmentalize the liquid so it avoids moving too much. Do you uh, oh, so I have, um, are you talking about my baffles in here? So these are my baffles, yeah. The baffles don't really work in game. So in real life, in a tanker like this, uh, you have baffles. And the reason is, and usually they're a big plate with holes in them. And so what's going to happen is, you know, uh, liquid is non-compressible. So what's going to happen is if, you ta if your tank is full of water, it's fine. You can hit the brakes, no problem. The problem is once it gets down, so say your water level drops down to here. Uh, that's the wrong button. Your water level drops down to here. So all of this is water and the rest is air. Well, what's going to happen now is it's going to slosh. So you have all this free space, and when you hit the brakes, all the water from the back is going to push all the way up, and it's going to come up, and it's going to slam against here. And this is 14,000 gallons of water in here. So that's 14,000 times 8 pounds per gallon. So 14,000 times 8, that's 112,000 pounds hitting the front of your trailer. That's going to push you through the stoplight. So what they do is they install these baffles, and as the water comes forward, it's it's like a big screen door, and it hits it, and the water can only go through the holes so fast. And so as this water comes forward to slosh, it hits the screen, and it slows the water down. This water hits this screen, slows it down, slows it down, slows it down, and it keeps it from surging and hitting and causing you to uh, go shooting through the stoplight. So that's what the uh, that's why there are baffles in there. They don't work in game. Um, so I took them out, but uh, that that is why they're in there. So I assume that's what you're talking about. Sound video, uh, probably at some point, sound video for the devs. Yeah, something I like to do. I like to do some uh, request videos and stuff like that. Now that I know they actually listen to them, I was gonna do the Industrial Frontier one back before and I didn't do it because I'm like I don't you know it's a lot of time to make a video like that and if they just don't pay attention at all but it sounds like they are are listening they're interested they this last week's update they did ask for people's feedback so they are interested in that I think they are listening to the community they're listening to some of the complainers who are just who are never going to be happy or disgruntled as well um but, you know, I think they're doing a good job covering their ass. They're trying to listen to the community and they're trying to make a show of it and I think that's good. So um you know, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it, I think they are doing a good job, you know, trying to listen to the community a little bit better. So, um, you know, I think I will make that video now. At first, I was like, ah, is this going to be worth my time because they, you know, whatever, whatever, they don't seem to be doing. They don't seem like they would care, but um, they do seem like they're actually interested. So I am um, more inclined to do it now that I think they'll actually uh, maybe listen to it. And then if people are like, oh, you know, we could we could support this video and then the devs will uh, maybe look at the thing I'm interested in. I think that's really a good way to get the, some community engagement. How are they doing their airlines here? I'm just trying to look at some pictures. Are they running hard lines through? I don't know, man. I'm trying to look at some pictures to see how they're running their, their airlines. They might have, they might have just uh, built in lines because Again, these are permanently, I think they're bolted together, the uh, fifth wheels. I think the fifth wheels are bolted on these. You know, I think you, they kind of detach them, but it's not as easy as, like, pulling the pin on a, um, on a fifth wheel. I'll do my own system here. It's already set up for T-Test. I could just do it through the... Um, I could do it through the fifth wheel, but I don't like doing that. It's not realistic, so I don't like doing it. So let's do this. We'll set my system up. Set up how I would do it, IRL. Okay, so let's go grab you. And we want to do that, and then we want to do electricity goes through. Okay, and then what I need to do is I need to find where my light cord for the T-TIS is right there. Light cord goes there, goes to this one. 
All right, so now we can hook a trailer up. So let's save this. Yeah, they did in the last week's uh, video. They were asking for more input on the on the uh, bug tracker feature request. So it would make sense too if you look. There's no, they don't have much left in that poll. And they are talking about things they want to do for next uh, year. So, you know, that makes sense for them to be uh, looking for some new input. And I think they're also trying to cover their ass a little bit by saying, hey, you know, what do you guys want? And they did this with pressurization. If, if you, if you, you know, I think I was right on the pressurization. They were already well involved with getting pressurization. It was coming whether we wanted it or not. What I think they were probably sick of some of the complaining and were like, hey, we can ask everybody if they want this pressurization, and they're probably going to say yes. And then when they say yes, we're going to be able to, uh, you know, we can say, hey, people ask for this, you know. And I think that's what they're doing, which isn't a bad thing because you're never going to get 100% consensus from any group of people. And so, you know, they kind of had to just ask, you know, to kind of be like, hey, people are asking for this, you know. Yeah, so I'll I'll do a video on that. You know, sound sound is reasonably easy to do that video. The one on the uh, industrial frontier, I have to do a lot of work for. That's why that one hasn't been made yet. Is the industrial frontier? I have to make an add-on. I'll probably do it in a live stream. I'll make the add-on for it. Maybe get a little bit more publicity for it, so that when the devs see it, they're like, "Oh, this is like a, a large group of people want this," or a large people group, you know, would would appreciate this. You know, nothing's gonna get done before space comes out. You know, that's a lot of work. All right, so see, we're not sinking in the ground anymore, so I think this is going to work, depending on how heavy that is. So what I'm going to do is leave this gap in here, and if I need to add an extra screw, I'm going to add that, an extra set of drive wheels. So this has no water in it now. So that's that one gear that uh, I said is too long. You can hear, like, listen to the engine. I'll turn it up. All right. So we're redlined, right? These gears are too far apart, and the way we can tell is, listen when I shift. Hear the engine go way down. That's called lugging. The engine's lugging. So that was that one gear I couldn't get close enough. And so, uh, you know, it's not a big deal, but it's just that's the one lug gear there. I, I forgot to hook up my tack again. All right, so if it can haul, there's no water in here. Uh, like the cab over can haul both of these full of water, no problem. The main thing was, can I haul a reasonably heavy trailer and have it uh, be fine with the um, with the wheels sinking in? So that's it. All right, good. So that works. Let's go ahead and recall this. Let me see where we're at here and check some chat. I have not played Stationers. I. Think, do I even have it? I might have. I have Astroneers, I think. I've not played that now. <clears throat> All right, so let's uh, let's try to see what we want to do over the trailer. All right, let's uh, do this. LC fifty one. So this is. Um, let me see. Do I have a trailer? I think I named one trailer a stock trailer. I think I made a stock trailer that was designed to be used for here trailer template. Okay, so this is just the frame. Uh, these types of grid frames are on uh, chassis, so <clears throat> I'm just going to use this because it it will uh, help speed things along. I'm going to go on the website really quick, and I'm gonna, I want to ch check the overall length. So the trucks are 100 feet long. So um, apparatus length. Um, no waterway. So the trailer is the apparatus, I would say, how they're running this. 56 to 56 to 60 feet. So this is a 51-foot trailer. Um, 
it's I'm looking at it next to a 53 footer it's shorter than a 53 footer so we'll say so that must be talking about the uh, something else all right so we'll use this as the basis for the uh, we use this as our basis and now it, this has TTIS all hooked up it just works and so we'll do that so what I want to do is All right, so I want to do is this first. Let's. So this has to be. This can't be as wide because it's sitting closer to the cab. So I need to round this. These are usually rounded in the fire trucks. And then this one will come here. We'll cut that, and that will go there. All right, so that'll be the start of the trailer. And then it's going to have a more of a drop frame on it. It has a very, actually, we could, you know what? We can run the same frame as we have. Um, it's not too bad. Let's go ahead and let's cut, let's do a bunch of cutting here. So if you look at this trailer, it has uh, all battle cannon pieces in the back. This keeps the center of gravity. See how low the CG is? That's how you can take, uh, that's how you can put on containers on this trailer and not have a tip over is it's just all the mass is down here in the axles where it should be. <clears throat> all right, so let's see how I want to do this. So that can go. I haven't decided if I'm going to permanently fix this trailer yet, but we'll see. You know, it, it's mostly, I don't really need to redo the frame or reinvent the frame because there's really nothing in here. You know, there will be when I'm done. Uh, it's actually, why did I even start with this frame? Now, starting with the frame is going to help me, but um, it's going to use one set of steer axles in the rear. It's not doing dualies, so uh, that can go. That can go. I actually kind of want to keep the mass a little bit on the low end here. What is this? I'm just making sure I don't have anything in here I need. Okay, that's up high. Okay, that's fine. Okay, good. I'm going to have to redo the wheels, so it's not the end of the world here. Because it's getting, uh, it has steer axles in the back. That's kind of the cool thing with these fire trucks is they steer. So, should be able to do this. And then those will just steer. All right, good. And then the flaps are going to be integrated into the body. So we can get rid of the flap uh, holders. The the my, my mud flaps are just there a one block XML to be flat. So that's why they're flat. <laughs> uh. What what made a big jump on second gear? Uh, my my truck because my truck makes a second gear is pretty low. Do you, I don't I don't understand the question, Eric Soros. Okay, um, and then we're gonna box this frame out. This frame gets pretty well boxed. I'm just kind of looking at reference material here. Okay, so it goes about mid tire. So it doesn't have an ICC bumper. That's what the bumper's called in the back in the U.S. Is ICC. I want to come up and over the flap, I think. Else it's going to look weird. Okay. 
just making everything this is kind of something new I do. I make everything black now just because it um it makes it uh easier so I don't have to go underneath and color everything because like a little bit of white shows so so much and there's so much contrast with it that it's uh like painting everything black it's just I don't have to go back and do it later. I think I'm going to cut through the flap. We'll see how it looks. It might look funky, funky, funky fresh, but we'll see how this looks with it cutting through the flap like that. You won't really see much of it. You'll see it sticking out the side, which is a little bit gross, but um, not too bad. I might be able to cut a flap so it's narrower, but we'll see. <clears throat> I might be able to cut this flap down one. We'll worry about that later. I'll just cut it out for now, and I'll uh, redo it later if I need to. Okay. I shouldn't have cut all the shouldn't have cut all the uh, DOT tape off. I should have moved it. I have DOT tape here. I can move the. I'll grab I'll grab another one and we'll I'll move all the DOT tape over here. That was a mistake to moot to cut all that DOT tape like that. These are spaced properly, so. So they put their DOT tape down here. Start here, and then I'll push DOT tape up if I need to, because I don't know how this is going to have to gooseneck at the moment. So DOT tape is just reflective tape. So back in the day, they didn't require DOT tape, and the problem was if a tractor trailer went across the road at night, you would see the tractor, and you wouldn't be able to see the trailer, and the trailer was blocking your lane, and the tractor looked like it was just in the other lane, and people would come screaming down the road, and they'd go right under the trailer and, you know, shear the shear the top of the car off. And so by putting these reflectors, if the trailer is across the road as the truck is pulling out under the road, you uh, your headlights will reflect off the tape. And so it's on the back bumper as well. They used to not have ICC bumpers with that bumper in the back, and people had some heads sheared off with that as well. So that is why those are on there. Because the cars will go right under. In Europe, they have the side uh, side protectors. We don't have those in the U.S. Because Europe is safe and the U.S. is not. Um... All right, good. So that's making some progress there. Making the um, stanchion system is going to be interesting. have to do that. Okay, this one is pretty squared out. Let's see, how high does this go? This goes pretty high. It goes about, oh, I don't know, here. Two, maybe three more blocks above at most. This one here, uh, so let's do this. One of them is um, like that. The ladder is going to take some time and some finesse to get that to work right. So we will bank on the ladder taking some time. I don't like the flat back on that. I might put a uh, blocking in like here. I don't know. 
Go like this. Maybe something like that. I'm trying to keep the mass not insanity on this. Okay. Coming along. All right, and then so the actual mechanism for the ladder is here. So probably do a regular pivot, thinking. I could do 360 degrees. I'll probably do 360 is probably what I'll do. All right, so let's go ahead and let's give this a test fit. Test to fit this out and see what. Uh, Got to grab the other one off. I want to see what this weighs too. Which way? Did I have a pentel on here? No, I think that's it. All right, good. See what this weighs. Uh, nothing. Okay, good. Let's go save this. Let's see. This is the um, fire truck. Trailer. Okay. Let's put them together and then I'm going to probably go take a bathroom break here in a second. That's one thing with this um, this train hanger is it's a pain that I have to always lower everything. It's, it's a different height than the rest of everything else. So I want to check all the mechanics of this. I want to make sure that I can jackknife this and it's not going to hit. I want to make sure that it doesn't um, it doesn't hit the rear here. So it's going to hit the rear, so I need to count blocks. Uh, it shouldn't jackknife because it has enough rotation room. That's why I uh, thin that out is so that it, it can jackknife and you have a short wheelbase. So let's say we need to go back three. Okay. All right, let's paint this red so that it's not as garish. This is going to take a lot of uh, decorating. And I'll just color swap the red out once I find a red that I like. All right, so that is the back there. Should probably cut one more high here. Let's cut this out just to be sure. We're not going to run into issues here. We'll do it right at the frame rails. All right, and so back here is where the driver's cab is to work these rear wheels, and then I'll just make it so you can control it with the uh, fire truck. Let's see why the fifth wheel, why the kingpin isn't hitting. There is okay. Kingpin needs to go one off. Kingpin's the pin that connects into the fifth wheel. Nice, that looks good size-wise. Digging that size. That size is good. Shaping's pretty good. Check mechanics out again. Uh, it's not sinking to the ground. We're gonna have to add ladder segments. We'll see how that behaves, but um, should be all right. All right, we need to build up air pressure. Check all of our lights. This should be working. Yep, okay, brake lights. I can't press brakes while I'm building air pressure.
All right, so we're uh, we have full air in our tanks. Let's get going here. Yep, that jump right there. What gears? I should be able to tell. So I don't like having a gear position indicator. I can tell by where my shifter is. So if I downshift, that's in the same gear. So that would be, uh, that is from fifth to sixth gear. So that sixth gear is the jump. Now it's seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth gear. 11th gear, 12th gear. Nope, I'm off. That's 13. I was one off. That's 13th gear. We're going 61, so perfect. Just want to make sure it behaves all right. I'm actually going to do some proper tractor trailer driving here. Try to, we'll do an alley dock, make sure I can alley dock this. Get us in reverse. Okay, we're in reverse. Oh, my reverse light's hooked up. Want to make sure I can jackknife this and I don't hit anything? Okay, good. Jackknife properly. Because I think sometimes they'll jackknife these and then they'll put out the supports when they're using the ladder. And that way the ladder can come up and over the cab. Say there's a building right here. The ladder can then go over the uh, fifth wheel and uh, can fight the fire there. So I want to do a 360 degree rotating ladder. And then uh, we'll go ahead and I'm going to, I don't have a good alley dock spot. Let me see. Need a good alley dock somewhere. What? What's going on here? Am I stuck on something? Oh, it gets, it clipped into my uh, tank there. Clipped into my thing there. So, see if I can back away from it. Got clipped into the toolbox. So. All right, we we'll recall it. All right, so that is working well. So let's get moving on the. I'm gonna take a quick uh, bathroom break and get a drink. I'm gonna throw you guys a quick ad, and I'll be right back. Let me uh, stick the music on so you have something to listen to while I'm doing this. All right, so let's get working on this uh, ladder system. That's gonna be an important part. Again, I need to kind of figure this out before I get too far into other things with the tractor because again, if I, this thing weighs too much, I'm gonna need to screw around with that. So kind of looking at the, uh, some of the other, some of the systems here. All right, <laughs> so let's see. Um, could do a turret ring. Do a small turret ring. All 
All right, we'll go up and then we'll put a table on it. Looking at different ones that have different designs here. Some kind of see how I want to design this. It's not going to work. That's going to rotate there, so I can't do that. That's fine. So that's the table of that. So what I'll do here, make it just make this look a little beefier down the bottom where it attaches. There we go. Yeah, it gives it a little bit of interest. And it looks like they they have a uh, pipe connection on here so that you can plumb the water directly into the ladder, which I think is interesting. Uh, not too much. Uh, we've got the trailer going. Tractor is mostly going there, Citrus, and then the trailer is uh, on its way to being worked on here. So, putting in right now, I'm putting in the ladder. So, I'm gonna go back to black blocks and I'll re. I'll paint this later. Okay, let me see. If I step off one, we'll be all right, right? Okay, I think I can go one off here. Let's try it. Let's play with something here. I'm doing it three across because I want the ladder to be able to, because um, I need the ladders three, the ladder segments are three across and then the rails go beyond that. So I want that to be pretty wide on that. All right. And then I need a, uh, a wider bottom base section. So the base section needs to be larger than the other sections. So I need to kind of figure that out here. Give me interesting. So we'll play with it here and we'll see where we get. So let's go across you, merge them. And the pivot should be the other way, but it doesn't really matter. Screw it. I can always fix the pivots later. So then I need a sliding section here to make the ladder longer. So let's see. It's going to be interesting to build because the ladder pieces need three gap on them. Yeah, the ladder pieces need a three gap on them, so that's going to be a challenge. That's going to be interesting. So we'll see how I have to do this to make this work. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. All right, uh, we'll see what I can do here. All right, let me grab their block. That'd be great. There we go.
I dropped the whole ladder assembly down one, I believe. We'll do that later. I'm just trying to see what I can do to get this to kind of be where I want it to be. Because I need the drive cab back there. <laughs> trying to decide what to do here. Okay, so these rails need to come up one. least one. We'll go up two. Almost get this to. Where is the upper limit of this? Ooh, that's actually. Uh, of course, I'm off one. I think it's going to be here. Yeah, so I'd have to go all the way up there with the next ladder segment, so that's just not going to work. So I'm not going to worry about the bottom ladder segment. <clears throat> Our character should be able to run up it, so they're a little bit superhuman as it is. We'll sink that one. Okay, why did that not work? Oh my god, what's it doing? It doesn't want to drag between the, the different sets. I suck. I should have done it earlier then. <clears throat> I 
Let's see where we're at here. <laughs> oh, second attack of the U boat. Nice. That should have a reasonable reach. Let's see, it'll be from about 22 meters. That's not bad. Should have painted that all gray, but I'll pull it and then I'll paint it. Let's see. So there's the ladder. You work on supports. <clears throat> supports will go in there. Two types of supports. I think I'm gonna do try to keep them on the simple side here. I don't wanna make them overly complicated.
Something, something went wonky there, guy. back up again. Can't move those like that, can I? Probably not. That will it? No, 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 it will not. Oh, shit. Shit, 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 shit. Ha, 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 ha. I figure out what I want to do with this. It's not going to work there either. Crap. It needs to be in the middle. That's not good. <laughs> okay. Let's see. We should be able to do this here. Symmetry. Devil. So these are going to go down. These are going to grab onto the gripper track to lock them down. 
That'll give it some stability. They'll go out. All right, good, good, good. So. Try to make them as fancy dancy as possible. This is for a challenge, so we'll make it fancy dancy. Alright, so little doors will open there. That will make it a little bit more uh, fancy-dancy. The little doors will open. Those will slide out. Alrighty. Let's see. Check some chat. Uh, probably not Ark. I have no desire to go back to Ark anytime soon, probably. Yeah, Star Starfield. I'm gonna probably play some tomorrow. <clears throat> Still doing a bunch of Tarkov. <clears throat> a lot of this, so. All right, good. So let's uh, work on these. Um, let's try to work on the mechanics of this. This is gonna take a little while to get the mechanics done, so. The uh, paneling and all that done. So, start working on that. So, let's start with the supports. And I will put them where I want them when I get them there. So, Let's see. Supports in. Arrow button. Left. Push. One. Supports up. Arrow button. Up. Push. Two. Out, arrow button to the right, push three. Down, arrow button down, push four. And then I'm gonna, I'll duplicate it on the other side probably, but I'm not gonna do it right now. So. Panel. And 
Veneer out. Veneer in. Uh, small veneer. Ripper. All right, let's screw with this. See what and maggles. Okay, good. It's linear in out. Okay. All right, so I'll do a boolean here. So we're gonna do the reset first. So it'll be so if it's um, uh, not x or y, x or y, we'll reset, and then we'll do three is up. That's down, that will go to the small linears. Gripper is to see double negative this for space okay start with that at least and then we'll uh, hook everything up and we'll test it Let's check the orientation here. Downs, okay. Downs are in. And out is ups. Grippers. Mags. Small linears. And then the doors will be it's for now I'm gonna just make them do this I'll cut the power up I'm gonna have to figure these out here in a second so all right let's go ahead and screw with this we're gonna darken here in this space here 
Right, let's go uh, supports out. Okay, not doing anything. Not doing anything. <laughs> That's all screwed up then. That's pressing the wrong thing. Support same works. Support's out. This is misbehaving. Let's let's do this. I just it's gonna be sitting in the back of the truck. It's not um it's gonna be sitting in the back of the truck, so it doesn't need to uh pick up the weight of it. So what we'll do is this for now. Put some landing gear on it. I don't want those always lit up. I have to add a button for that, but we'll go supports out. Okay, that's all screwed up. There's all screwed up here. I gotta screw them. Okay. How is this all screwed up so bad already? I just put them in order and then I didn't line them up right. So uh, let's see. Let's let's check this. See what's up. So in is one, and that's going to be down. So down is one. Down is. Down is in, down is one, that's correct. Okay, so that means two is, nope, three. Three, okay, then up is gonna be two, and that's four, okay, I'll be white. Okay. These are backwards. Okay. I'll probably make something more elegant here than this, but uh, it's a start at least. That is something to start with. All right, good. So that's started. I can refine it later. I just want to make sure, you know, good proof of concept is the first step for me. And then after that, I work from there. So Get this going here for the, uh, the ladder next. So I'm just going to throw controls up here and then I'll play with it later. So pretty much the same, out, in, up, down, uh, left, right. Okay. So let's do a seat for now. Probably do a control handle. Let's do a control handle. So we'll do a base to stand on here. I need to figure out railings are going to be the big thing is how how I can put railings on here and what that's going to look like. So that's going to be a big part of it. So start with just a handle for right now. And then I'll screw with this later. Let's see. WSAD, I think. So WS. Let me check. I think I screwed the orientation up on these. Yep, they're backwards. Okay.
Right, there we go. Let's go. Uh, WS there is good now. And then what do I need? I need. Need a, I need to put in something for this. Let's do that. Okay, that that will go in here in a second. And then let's do extension to start with, and then I'll screw with this in a second here. So. All right, just want to again test and proof of concept. Make sure proof of concept works. Make sure things are behaving themselves. I should have left those uh, fake landing gear on there for now. Let's put them back on. It's on reset, I gotta fix it. I meant to change it, I did. Uh, WS is gonna be sticky. Heavy machinery, you don't want moving fast. Machine game. Okay. And then I'll get rotation going later. Look at, look at my arm strength. Look at my core strength. Amazing. Look at that. So we're in motion here. Hey! It's getting hung up on something. What are you getting hung up on there, jackass? There we go. Come on, push. Oh, did I, I cut a block out of there? No. Oh, it's... uh. I pressed both buttons at once, so it stopped it. So I think that's going to be plenty of reach. What do you think? Looks pretty good, huh? Reach-wise. You know, I could put pipe segments instead of ladders and get railings on that, too. That's a thought, so I have to think about it. But we can go like this, too, so. Can I ladder? Why can't I grab the ladder here? There we go. <laughs> there he goes. They're not too shabby. Pretty good start. So it's functional. So you have to get up there. No problem running up there. That works. So that's got a pretty good reach on it. Not too bad. And it's, uh, so let's get the rotation in here. So somebody was asking, how do you make a 360 degree pivot? We're gonna do that now. Let's do that. Ladder, okay. All right, so we'll start with that. So we need a number output to the, uh, whatever the hell you call it, uh, turret ring. Okay, turret ring. Uh, then we want to go out and we want to go to the... to raise. Um, then that's going to be extend, tracked, and I'll probably put a fire nozzle on there um, at some point, but um, track, extend, raise, turret ring, okay. Handle. Uh, 
All right, so let's go up, down. So up, down is four. And what we'll do is simple here threshold if this is one extend and if this is negative one tracked okay that's goob raise is simple raise is going to be ws so that's uh, two And this, uh, one of the reasons I don't want to do it directly from the, the handle is I can go in and put in clamps if I don't want it to go over a certain amount. So that's all important. Turret ring. All right, let's do this. This is what somebody was asking about the other day. So let's uh, move you all this crap up there. All right, good. So turret ring. So I need the turret ring read number input ring position. All right, we need a PID. PID is life, PID is love. Let's go ahead and we'll extend this out one. P-value, okay. Ring position. All right, so what we wanna do is we're gonna use AD. So AD is one. We'll start start with it this way. All right, so ring position is going to be process variable where I want it is there. We're going to start simple, and then I'm going to work on getting a 360. Okay. So we'll just get this. I want to get it moving first and then we'll we'll play with it. So All right. And I definitely want to I'm going to bring the sensitivity down on AD. I don't want this jerking around. This is going to be the This is going to be the um most sensitive one is swinging because we're swinging the mass away where it's going to try to tilt us. So I need to do that. Um let's see. And the tractor is a big part of the stability on this. So for example, let's save this really quick. So the tractor will jackknife. And so the tractor will be 90 degrees to the trailer and then the sports go out. And so when the ladder is going this way and the tractor is jackknifed this way, it's trying to push the tractor into the ground. It's like an L. So that's gonna give it stability. When it's going the other way, it's trying to lift the tractor up. So they probably always put the tractor on the right direction, but... Um, All right, and then handle. I need to enter the p-value in here. I need to hook everything up to it and hook anything up. All right, so let's go extend, retract, turret ring, current rotation, raise. All right, and then uh, p-value is a keypad. Stick it right here where I can uh, use it. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna start with a value of one for the uh, keypad. All right, one is our p value for now. All right, we're gonna go up. I didn't fix the number. Uh, it's trying to rotate it off. Unless it's just misbehaving. 
Two is raise. One should be this. That's why I was doing both axes at once. Let's hope that read in one. Yep, yeah, it's read in one. Okay. All right, raise. Rotate. So it's rotations backwards. Pretty damn stable without the tractor even on there. So. so the chart ring can go 360 degrees because you're setting its speed. So you're telling it, hey, I want you to go one to the left, one to the left. And so it's going to try to go one to the left. And then you're going to say, hey, I want zero, and it's going to stop. It's going to give it zero motion. So that way it can go 360. Let's extend. Uh, up. I didn't set that up. Crap. Okay, so one is working fine. One's usually what I end up putting in this for the p-value. Anyway, let's just do property. Let's see. Uh, yaw, p-value. Okay, one. Twelve would be absolutely miserable. Um, that's good. All right. All right, that's good. And then uh, I need to configure the handle again because I screwed it up. So uh, up down needs to be reset 100%. Okay, I spawn that. All right, so I need to invert this number, but it's not the end of the world. Just backwards to where I want it. And then we'll go up. Okay, why you no do? Why you no do here? What is causing this problems here? <clears throat> Probably needs uh, to extend a little bit because it's getting hung up right there, I bet. So let's do something to keep it uh, behaving itself here. Oh, come on. Nobody asked you to go there. Let's try that. See if that fixes it. There we go. So now it's not hanging up. It might have been the altitude, too. It didn't want to do it with it angled up, but. So what I'll probably do is I'll extend the railings out one, and then that will allow me to put on railings on the the final ladder segment. So it's a little less scary as hell. <laughs> All right, so let's test the stability. Oh, I don't even have the stabilizers out, so that's hairy. Let's get those out. And I want these to go out further. I have a bunch of stuff I want to do here. Right, jump, jump, you scum. Jump, you terrible scum. Get up there. Get up there, you. So, like, I can walk up this no problem, and then I can walk up the ladder if I want. I can also use the ladder. So, if we get vertical, I can use the ladder, as you can see. So, that's helpful. So, yeah. Very good. So, this is coming along nicely. All right, we're going to screw with this some. So, let's go ahead and... Coming along nicely. I'm enjoying building this.
This will be a fun competition. I really miss the competitions. I'm glad, you know, JSI is doing this. So I get something I can participate in as well. So. Yeah, I definitely miss doing them. So. here. I don't want to meet this. Keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid, as they say. Oh, come on, stop clicking on random stuff. Scoundrel. It's a nice thing getting, you know, having my trucks pretty much done. You know, and I've worked on trucks recently and I kind of know what I'm doing with trucks. So that helps to uh, expedite all this process as I don't have to really worry about you know, doing all the truck building, which helps me get this done in a reasonable fashion. I can focus on things like the ladder. So this could probably use like a guide rail too. So I can put a guide rail in now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this. Where can this? And I wanna get a, I wanna get a nozzle on the end of that. So I'm not going to be able to do it with the, so I can do it with the piping on the sides. All right, so what we'll do is we'll put that back and then I will do this. Let's put a couple blocks here first. Oh, come on, stop. Don't do what I'm clicking on. Do what I want you to click on, you scoundrel. Okay. And so what I'll do here is this. Get rid of you, Simul tree. Okay. This side is going to be liquefied, and then the other side is not. So this will allow me to have um, liquid in here. And then that will allow me to put a nozzle on here. Drag, he's gone. I think pipe's going to be too thin looking. And it's going to be too limiting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for on the on the uh, right side and close pipe. And on the left side, we'll do um, like that. Okay. 
Okay, and then I'll go... This on this side. Okay, good. Yep, that's going to be better. And then I will go Symmetry. Do drag where I want you. Scoundrel. Okay. Now we'll get rid of symmetry on this side. We'll come up. Come <laughs> on, dude. Just drag where I want you to. Hey, he says. Be here all day. Uh, that's good. Okay, then we want to go pipe on this side. Beautiful. All right, that is good. And then we'll cut this. Let's plumb in a... What the hell? What is it called? The firefighting thing. I've been using it 100 years. What's that sprayer called? There's one that's already built that I'd like to use just because it's going to be easy. It would be cool to go overboard and put a PTO where the engine of the truck powers other utilities, but <laughs> it's tough to get PTO stuff to work right in game. So, fluid cannon, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you there, uh, David. Appreciate that. That's in the ass when I try to remember some of the names of this stuff. Cut some of the shortness of the ladder doing it this way, or I could. I can't push it all the way in the ladder. Right, you know what we could do? I can push it in the rings, the rungs, rings, rungs of the ladder. So let's go like this. Go there, and then this will be like that. So that's plumbed. And we'll put one more ladder segment here, like so. And then this will stick out again some more. So. There we go. So now we have a nozzle. So I'm going to have to invert some of it, but that's going to be our firefighting nozzle there. So that's spiffy. I like that. So that will allow us to spray Vata from there. So we don't even need to go up on the ladder. We can also just spray. Catch up and chat for a second, guys. I've just been kind of doing it, doing it. So it's been coming along here. So.
Okay. Go. And we need to do railings on this side, and I want them to be offset so they go opposite of the other railings. Drag, you scoundrel. Come on. Bingo. Good. We're going to add a lot of mass to this, so we're going to have to worry about that. But, uh, should be able to get by it. I always counterweight it a little bit. Counterweighting helps quite a bit. It also works better, too, with a little bit of mass on it, so. Starting to look the part, though. I wish it wasn't so friggin' dark in this hangar. We'll get out of this hangar if it's miserable to watch. Let me know if it's dark for you guys or you can actually see what the hell's going on. Doesn't seem to be having a problem. So it's going to get some pistons to for looks. That's tipping over because I didn't put the supports out. All right, good. So that is working well. I'm liking that. Let's, let's go ahead and I'll, I'll read some chat. I see people are trying to talk to me. Yeah, I'll have to gif that, see if with me climb the ladder. Try not to ignore anything in the chat, but I see you guys talking with each other, so I'm kind of, if I miss something, just uh, repost it at the end. Uh, what kind of XML tutorial? Like, just in general, or what? Work of the sports later. Uh, so let's let's do this as well. Let's cut this off. Let's save this. Alright, I need to invert some stuff, so let's do that. Ladder. Uh, where are we at here? This here needs to have an inversion on the turret ring. So if, I don't want the big function, I want the small function. But I'm having a lot of fun with this challenge. This is the kind of thing that like I I've never built a fire truck in game. Never been interested in building a fire truck, and now that there's a challenge, I'm interested. You know, it's that's the kind of thing that a, a good challenge, you know, inspires you to do it. I, I've never really built a race car, and Big Man had a great challenge with a race car, and that's, you know, a good challenge takes you out of comfort zone, has you do something else. You know, you might be searching for something to build. It really helps with that as well. You know, that's what I really love with a good challenge is it, um, you know, and then you see what other people are building, so you want to compete, you know, so you start doing some uh, better, you know, your your building gets better as you start to um, kind of see competition. So that's one reason why I like I tell people, don't be afraid to post your stuff on the challenge discussion. It's not all about winning. It's about, you know, did you enjoy the build you built? You know, like I built the stuff for the challenge, like for Big Man's challenge, I built the car I wanted to build. 
you know, I didn't care if it was the fastest car because I built the car I wanted to build. And when it, you know, didn't win for speed, I didn't care because that wasn't what I was building. I wanted to build the car like I wanted it, you know. And so for me, that was fun because I, at the end, I ended up with a car that I wanted and I wanted to use, you know. And so you don't necessarily have to worry about winning some of these things. It's, you know, build the vehicle you want, you know, and then. You know, it may or may not win, but it's uh, at the end of it. You guess what? You get to have a cool vehicle that you built. You know, so it's uh, sometimes it's just beneficial to have some inspiration and then go out there and build something that really speaks to you and and has the features that you want. You know, so it's you know it's again it's not all about winning. So um, get that in there. So again, we have to consider what this is going to do when we put on. The tractor. The tractor is a is a big part of the stability. Is the tractor. All right. So why? Okay. One of the one of the supports is touching. So I have to fix that. There we go. Okay. That's why I was wonky. One of the supports was touching. Yeah. I have to hook this up, or else we're not going to be able to take the brakes off. I need to build up air pressure. All right, air pressure's built up. Let's get going here. Jumped into gear because it was already revved up. So I need a I need a thumbnail too for this video. So we'll grab one right now. I wish we could change the contrast in game. Like I like it, uh, uh, like that extra little bit of contrast really um, is really better for me, you know. And so it's uh... all right. So this is gonna need a hard point to attach. As you can see, it, it wants to move a little bit on its own. All right. So let's say we pull up to the fire. Let's actually use the building. All right. The building's on fire. Oh dear. And we want to get up to the top of the building. So we want to set this up correctly. That's gonna do that. All right. That's uh, all right. We're having problems now. Damn it. <clears throat> all right, where can I get a... Can't do... Okay, those are all problematic there because of what they are. Okay. All right, so that will lock it on so that doesn't move while we're moving. Go here, and we will do p-value is going to be an on-off output. That's going to be release trailer locks. Okay, release trailer locks. That's on there. And we want to make that. We'll just make that. Oh, I don't know. Base bar. So 30, what is it, 31? I think 31. One of them's occupied, one is space bar. And what we can actually do is the on signal here. For the PID, we can actually make that. So when I release it, it will uh, then control the PID. So that'll work. Right. And then, uh, yep, okay, I did do a negative on there. All right, so let's say, let's uh, hook that all up. Uh, where are you at there? Release, uh, trailer locks, release, release. Okay, good. 
So that will do that. All right, good. So it's close. How many back? We need to count this. Okay, so one, two, three, four. I script count maybe five, six, seven. So seven, and then what was a down one? Seven and down one. Okay, so let's go to the trailer. <clears throat> Was the front one? There it is. All right, cut. One down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know if that's going to be where it's supposed to be, but we'll paste it and try it. Doesn't always work that way, so. No, I made it worse the other way. I did it backwards. Of course, typical. Typical, typical, typical. Okay. And I'm going to change the... The sports are going to get some work and some love. Uh, most of the drive system is pretty good. You know, a lot of detailing. This needs a, a lot of opening containers and stuff like that. A lot of detailing, a lot of painting. All right, so we should be good on... Brakes should be off now. All right, so let's go ahead and... So we want to set up to work on this uh, building here. So what I want to do is jackknife the tractor like so. Brakes. All right, uh, we're going to be able to reach that. We should be able to. Okay, so, and we're going to back up a little bit. So we want to jackknife it. Okay, so we're jackknifed. So it makes an L, so it's nice and stable now. We're going to set the brakes. All right, and I'll put it in. Uh, what you would do is you'd leave it in gear, and then you would shut it off. So you put it in the lowest forward gear. It should be first, but I left it in reverse. Reverse is fine. <clears throat> Support's going to come out. And down. All right, good. And that's, I don't want to lift the wheels up of the tractor. They're helping me. So I just want to give it some support there. Um, okay. And why are we not rotating now? It probably doesn't like that negative X. It probably needs to have the negative X on the input value. So that's probably what that's all about. <clears throat> now let's extend it while we're here. Get another screenshot. Are you going to extend it? Are you going to misbehave the whole time there, guy? All right, we have some things to fix here. It's trying to move. It's it's hanging on something here. It's catching on the end there, I think. Doesn't like something there. It's hanging on it. It has all these, um, you know, it has the railings that could potentially grab. So there was something I wanted to do anyway. So let's fix that to try to make sure that's uh, run smoothly. All right. So let's go ahead and... Let's open up the trailer. So what do I got to move it back 14 now? So proof of concept is working fine. It just needs a little of this and that. So. Just 
going to go like that, and I'll screw with it later. All right, uh, let's see. So what we can do is guide this. We have a gap in here, which will work to our advantage. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to put in... a uh, track section might do two let's do gr uh let's do let's do uh let's see grippers i don't want a ton of grippers i want like one gripper okay so what we'll do is we will do track section here like so we'll just pick a side i'll go to the right wow why won't why won't you go there why doesn't it like it down here what is the problem down here? Why wasn't a place here? A place there? Oh no, you suck. You won't do it there. Mm, that's no good. Huh? That sucks. That's that's right where I wanted it too. That's not good. That is not good. That would have been easy. I was hoping I could put it there, but it doesn't want to be. Doesn't want to. Oh, it's. Let's see if I can do it in the middle here. Nope, doesn't want to hook there either. Shit, that was that would have been too friggin' perfect. Because what I was gonna do is put a length of track here and then a gripper on the end, and that would grip on the track. Because what's happened is this is being held all the way at the back by this, and so it doesn't like it. Hola. What I could do is this. Let's do this. Okay, let's see if I can do this. So right here. This actually, this will work on one side. The other side's not going to work, but because of the water that I need. But uh, hopefully, one side should be fine. Let's take off the symmetry here. Cut this. All right, and then let's find that. The hell is it? Right here. Okay. Right here. So. Decide if I do a million billion grippers, which are a pain in the ass to do that many of them, or I do tracks all the way. You can only go on one side anyway. The other side has to have that plumbing for the water. You know what I could do? Okay, I could do this. Let's reroute some of this plumbing. Do the upper railing. So this is gonna go all the way back to here. Right here, okay. All right, that's good. And then this is gonna go plumbed up like this. I want to put guide tracks on this. That's gonna help. Uh, it's gonna help it guide. It's gonna help it lock. It's gonna. God damn it! Drag you son of. You 
very bad words here in a second. All right, so that plums it up there, and then what we want to do is I'm gonna do a bunch of ripping here. Second, I'm trying to decide if I want to put them sideways because that you can get locking pieces if you do it sideways. So we'll try to decide that in a second here. Let's do some cutting. This will get a block. Come on, get things on the right one. There we go. All right, this will cut out all this. Where are we going to? All the way to here. Okay. And this will cut all the way out to here. Yep, that one I want to do symmetry on. See what I'm doing in a second here. Sorry, I'm out of chat. Yeah, I'm going to concentrate a little bit to think about what I'm doing here. All right, so we'll do a gripper here. Can I go down one on this? I can. Okay, so I will go like this. Where is the other one? Right here. Okay, good. So this is where I want to be, right here, right under this uh, pipe here. So, All right, good. So right here. Perfect. All right. That will keep it symmetrical too, which I like. Dig on symmetry. Okay, good. All right, and then what we want to do is so this gripper. So I either I'm gonna either turn them this way or sideways. I'm gonna try turn them this way. We'll see what happens. Then we'll take track pieces. This will make this much more stable and stronger. And we'll go like this, and then these will go all the way down. And those will ride on those grippers, and that will help keep it aligned and slidey. So let's play with it. Okay, it's hanging there for a second. There we go. All right, so yeah, those are going to see they're sliding on those grippers there. So the grippers are right there. Those tracks are now sliding on that. I can probably get rid of those blocks there. Those are probably helping to hang it up. But that is going to be much better now. And then when I let go of this button, see how it slides back? So there's two ways you can fix that. One with brakes on these sliders. And the other one is you can do, um, you can turn the, Track segment sideways, and it will grab on each one. So there we go, and that will grab. So there's two two options I have on that. So let's try the. Let's see where we're at here. So I want to cut out some of this. Is what is that? I'm trying to find where that uh, where those blocks were interfering with me here, where I'm seeing them. Is it here? Yeah, it's right here. So. Okay. All right, so we'll add on grippers here. So this will be output gripper brakes. All right, and so what we'll do is So if it is zero, it will activate the gripper brakes. Now right, we'll see how that behaves itself. Oh, I cut the hard points, so that's fine. 
because I don't need the track on every single segment either. So. so as I let go of it, the brakes are coming on. And we'll see if it's enough to hold it. So those brakes should come on. I can put more gripper sections. I can put multiples on there. So if it's not enough braking, I can also add some. Just checking some chat as I'm kind of doing this. All right, so that gripper brakes, just the two gripper brakes seem to be uh, working. There's not, like, this isn't a crane. It's not going to be hauling stuff. I will have to work with what it's misbehaving right now, but I'll work on that later. What is, why is, oh, this is screwed up. Okay, I got to fix that. I screwed up the piping here for some reason. I should have known that. Yeah, this piping doesn't go like this, so. Uh, it goes underneath. So, right here. This is where it gets uh, hooked up. So, Let's see, check where we're at here. Merge that. Why is what what happened here? Okay. What the hell am I looking at here? Oh, this got this got merged wrong. Okay. This got grabbed wrong here. So, don't do both sides. Come on, you scumbag. Uh, let's do this here. Cut, paste, view, okay, merge. Okay. Oh, symmetry, you demon. So one thing that, like the devs could do, for example, like this. I don't like this pipe coming out of the top here, but if it came out of the side, in this case, that would be great. Either give us the option to have more parts would be kind of cool. All right, so that's replumbed and fixed there. That was probably part of the issue was his hitting stuff. All right, let's try to fake in some pistons here. So let's see how I want to fake in these pistons. So when you're making a uh, hydraulic piston, this, these of course are not hydraulic pistons, but uh, you, you need to make a triangle. So I'll bring up the paint again. All right, so when we're making a hydraulic system, like you know, especially you know, I don't I don't make these work. They're uh, in game. They're faked. So what they do is they just um, I fake them so that the the pivots are actually doing the work and the pneumatics are faked to look like hydraulics. So say you have uh, we'll, we'll actually use the case use case we're doing now. But we have oh geez. basic rectangle there. Okay, so we have the ladder. And we have our pivot. I hate how I have to click off on this every time. And we have our pivot position here. All right. And so some people they get in pro they have problems where let's say that the hydraulic and this we we'll call it a hydraulic piston, they'll do it straight. So it'll be like this. And you don't want to do it like that. What you want to do is you need to make a triangle. And so what you want to do is you want to have the piston come at a triangle. And so that if you were to look at it, it would make a triangle shape like this. And that is how you're actually getting the motion to work. You need it to be a triangle. You can't push straight because if you push straight, all you're going to do is try to separate this from this. You're going to try to push this and break it off. This, because it's making a triangle here, is going to try to push up. 
and cause this to go up and it's not gonna it's gonna push it out as well but it's gonna do more up force and that's gonna allow it to move up <clears throat> so you don't want it straight here and pushing it's just gonna push and not do anything so so what we're gonna do here is we need pivots on both sides so we're gonna go ahead and And this is all for aesthetics. This doesn't really do anything. So let's go. Let's see. Can't come up and hit this. It's got to be on the outboard. Okay. So we'll do a pivot. like so, piston, like so, and then what we want to do is we're going to put a connector, and I want to keep the length of this as short as possible, All right, and then we need to find where this is going to attach, so that will be right here, so delete something that I need. No, it did not. Beautiful. Okay. All right. And then, so what we'll do then is go to these and we'll take the strength and we'll move it to zero and zero. You have to do a bunch of Pythag Pythagoras if you want to get it. So now see they're already connected. This is actually off one. I need up offset one. So see how this is straight? This is going to try to break it. So I just did what I said not to do because I wasn't looking. But um, see, it, it's just going to bind up. It's doing a little bit, but it's going to bind up mostly because it's trying to push straight ahead. It's not really making that. It's making the triangle a little bit. It's not terrible, actually. And actually, see how we have a bunch of um, space. So we, what we're going to do is um, we'll move this up to here. And this will look even better, too. And it will give us that triangle we want. See, and when in doubt, look at real-life examples. It really helps to uh, solidify it for you. And what we can actually do is um, let's, let's do it like this and... We can uh, change the orientation. So see, they've already grabbed. Nice. Okay. And now they look the part, but they're actually not doing anything. You know, and those those uh, those pivots, they have some give the electric connectors, so they need to be able to rotate. So those are rotating for us a little bit. All right, good. Now let's go ahead. I'm going to change them up just a little bit again. And I think I want to go up more. And we'll cut that. Oh, I don't want to cut everything. Let's cut this because I want to be able to grab it. <clears throat> and what we'll do is go like this. All right. See if that grabs all right. Further we get away. You can see they still grab, so that's better. I like the look of that better going up. there. It has a little bit of uh, piston showing, which is nice. There we go. So that looks the part. So it looks like the pistons are doing the work. They're doing nothing. You know, you'd have to figure out Pythagorean theorem to get that to work right for... to actually make it work, and it would... You know, it'd hinder you. It'd either be breaking or breaking for us or be helping a little bit, you know. So it's it's better just to let the hinges do their good work and let the pistons look like they're helping. You know, and the other thing is these can go... I don't know what that was just grabbing. Oh, it's the, it's the connectors. The connectors keep trying to grab the floor. But you see that looks that looks the part. It's not really doing anything, but it looks the part. All right, so what I want to do here is that's about maximum of where I want to go. Maybe 
probably there I'd say is the max I want to go. And so let's look at the pivots. So current rotation is 0.18. So we'll say 0.19. So we'll go in here. All right, 0.19. Let's grab this. 0.19. Uh, max pitch rotation. Okay, max pitch rotation right there. And what we'll do here is for the rays, I'm going to do a function. And we'll do... Uh, We'll do clamp x comma zero comma uh, and then we'll do z. Is that a zero? Did I put a zero on there? I did put a zero on there. Okay. And so this will go in here. Actually, no, it was 0.75. It's got to be 0.75. It was what I put in, not what it uh, was reading. That would be if I was comparing it in a PID, but I'm not. All right, and so that will, uh, I can change that outside of the panel. That will limit that. Gripper brakes are good. Why is the turret ring? So what I'm going to do is do an inverse of this instead and see if this will fix us. Oh, you know what it is? I bet this is the problem is uh, I didn't hook that up to toggle. So let's do that. So trigger needs to be hooked to toggle. It is toggle. Okay. If I don't press that, I don't get rotation. So I got to be careful. Okay. Let's see if we have rotation again. Nope. No rotation. Let's just hook a constant back up. Make sure that's not the problem. But not too bad for uh, progress on one day, you know. This is uh, going this is going along pretty well. <clears throat> Did I? Okay, yep, that was connected like that. All right. When did I disconnect that? Um, okay. And then I need to hook the hard points back up. So right here, these can, uh, so these are track segments. This can go ahead and uh, actually, this is perfect. Go right in there, no problem. All right, beautiful. So that now adheres. There we go. A little bit fast. So it's going to do this swinging nonsense. I'll fix that later. It's starting to get overweight, so I have to worry about it doing nonsense. It's starting to get heavy. Oh, come on. Get off of that. Let's, uh, where's the turret ring? Max power, gear ratio. Try that for now. I'll check chat in a second. I see it rolling, but a couple of people have been talking amongst themselves. So let's do this too. Oh, that's awful. There we go. You know that those are really not there to lift the trailer up. The tractor is to hold it up, and the uh, supports are just to keep it from translating too much. All right, so at 132, it's much slower now, so it's going to be less likely to um, it's going to be less likely to spin crazy. It's still we have an issues with the tipping. The tipping is going to cause some issues, but slowing it down is helpful. And the tractor is also a big part of the stability, so the tractor is going to help stabilize it. So. Get it. We'll get it wrapped. We'll get it fixed. And uh, I can put a bigger turret ring on there too, if uh, if that will help. I see why this won't slide now. Why 
What are you doing? Why won't you slide there, guy? That piston on this side is acting the wonk. Because it doesn't like the way it's tilting. So I definitely need better stabilizers. I'll work on those. The tractor is going to definitely be a big part of the stability system is having the tractor on there fixes it. Let's make sure that that limiter is limiting me. Yep, see, I can't go up any higher, so that clamp is fixing that. All right. Try to see if I can push this out again. But good progress on this, I think, you know, between the ladder and the tractor being uh, pretty set up. I think it's pretty functional. Do a couple things and probably uh, take a break. All right, so those are, whoop, come on, man. Those are good there. Now, one thing you can do to help these be stable is you go like this. Ah, uh, come on. Go like this and join them. So make them one part like that. Now those two uh, pistons are one part. So they move together. They slide back and forth together, up, down, together. That will help that. I'm trying to see why this is not going out. Sometimes the pistons will cause a problem with linear tracks where they are having physics issues. I've had that before, so it could be that. If they're not if they're too close, it might not want to push out. Okay, there we go. So it's working now. So I think I think it's helpful that those uh, two joining those two pistons together definitely did help. So So the stabilizers will help to get that. Why is this stopping when I get to there? Okay. So we'll get these these issues will get fixed. It's uh it's pretty heavy and so it's trying to go to the low side. It's trying to go to wherever gravity is. And so by stabilizing it with the tractor and better stabilizers, that will help fix that issue. The other thing I can do is I can also put a counter, a little counterweight on it, but um, I don't really need it too much, I don't think. But I think it's coming along good. What are you guys thinking? Just check the chat, see if anyone's talking to me or just amongst themselves. Okay. Good. So, yeah, I think this is coming along. Uh, let's see. What do I want to do here? Check in. I had a message in Discord. I want to see what that is. Okay. Somebody responded. I'd, I'd help them with something. All right. So this is coming along nicely. Let's go ahead and save this. Save it to this one. So the tractor works really well. It needs finishing, some dressing up. This needs, of course, dressing up in panels. Uh, we'll get this a little bit more working so let's see this is the smallest turret ring as well so let's grab i want to throw on a bigger turret ring see if that will uh, help which direction you turn in turret ring 
uh, away. And so what I'll do is I'll get rid of that inversion. I'll put it the other way. So we'll go like this, which way you face them? Solid left, so we'll go solid right. Okay, we'll do that, and then I can replace this turret ring. And uh, the bigger one. And then uh, I can get rid of that inversion. So bigger one might not fix it, but it may as well. So we'll see. Also looks a little bit beefier. I kind of like that. A little bit of more of a beef cannon. Did it really stay connected to the when I switched out the turret ring? That's interesting. Or did it leave it in there? Does it have the old one in there? The old one's still in there. That's interesting. Let's do two. That might strengthen this up quite a bit by having two turret rings. Yeah, let's try that. So cut this. Try uh, you in it. Which one do I have? The outside or the inside one? So now we have two turret rings in here. Let's see if these behave or absolutely hate each other. <laughs> Go ahead and just hate each other. Okay. But that that's a good way. We might be able to get some more stability out of this. Okay, so this is going. Let's do both of them and see what's up. Get rid of that inversion. Let's see if this behaves better with rotation. With double turret rings on there. Also, the p-value of 1 could be a little high. If I lowered that down, it would um, it wouldn't overshoot as much, so that could help too. But double turret rings, I think, is going to help with a little bit of stability. Okay. Try to get it to extend here. It doesn't want to extend right this second. Ah, oh, come on, man. Extend. Got a lot of physics going on here, so we'll see what it does. All right, we'll see you later there, FS. Thanks for joining. I'm going to probably finish up here soon. Okay, what is this grabbing on? It's having grab issues again. Let's sit this down. See if it will behave itself a little bit here so I can go down. There we go. Let's try to just get this push out now. All right, still have a little bit of a physics issue with that. Could put more grippers to help keep it aligned. That could help. The legs aren't helping. I'm going to put better legs on there. But they're just placeholder anyway. I think it's working well. So we have a uh, trailer's working well, tractor's working well. Let's go ahead and save this, and I think we'll go take a break. So I think good progress on this. So this is going to be a fun challenge. I'm looking forward to this. So 
a lot of good progress on this. A lot of decorating time left. I'm going to try to get in some Starfield tomorrow. So if any of you guys are interested in some Starfield, I'm going to grab that tomorrow and uh, start doing a little bit of a playthrough through that. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, let's see if I appreciate it. Let's uh, make sure I give another shout out here for um, for Miles for joining Captain's crew. So I'll make sure I get you in the um, credits for that one. Um, see anything else? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.